Ooh, your leg's there. Hi, hello. Hello, hi. I'm gonna do this light also. Nobody's watching, right? Oh, that's the nice thing about streaming on the P the PS4. I can actually see how many. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it'll actually show me who's in here. Uh, but yeah, Jess is Jess is over here. She's tired. Um, I'm Matt. This is Super Apartment Friends, and uh, Donkey Kongathon is postponed for tonight. Just for now. Just for now. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, no. I didn't mean forever. I just mean just for tonight. <laughs> Because we had, well, t well, Ted, I've been fucking necromancing chords and talking to a person on the phone, which is really hard for me. Just helped out so much. It was a t we we tag teamed this bitch and still couldn't get it to work. Um, so yeah, so yeah, so I'm playing Mad Max. I need to blow off some steam by driving really fast and beating some people to death. Yeah. So, yeah. This is, and this game's cool. This is a cool game. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for stopping in, Ted. Glad to see you. Uh, but okay. it's been a night. <laughs> That's a yeah. It was, it was, it was I've really been hard. wrangling shit all night, dude. We, I can't tell you how many times we turned things off, turned them back on, and unplugged them before the game. Yep. Game. Tried every possible configuration. So, Ted, tonight... Uh, the plan was to play Donkey Konga on GameCube, which is a fun, goofy little uh, music and rhythm game. Um, and so I thought I'll use the same setup that we've always used to stream Super Nintendo games. And instead of a Super Nintendo, uh, I'll stream a GameCube. And then tonight, everything just decided, fuck you, I'm not working. And so we... Tried the Super Nintendo. Yeah, either. yeah. My leading theory is, uh, or not my, our leading theory is that the AV to HDMI converter shit shit out. I think that's uh, we think that's what happened. Right. Right. Um. Yeah. No. Conga's bad. Not Donkey Conga. He said. Thank God, I thought you wanted to watch Conga. Conga sucks. It's a 1961 or 62 uh, British ripoff of King Kong. It's not very good. I'm going to play this game, though. <sighs> yep, it's a dark, dark game. Now, the movie Congo is... Congo is pretty fun, yeah. That's not like a... a, a... I, I want that to be the case, but I think at the end of Congo, they're shooting lasers at the evil apes. Which is still pretty good. I wanted Bruce Campbell, yes. He doesn't do much in Congo. Or he doesn't think much of Congo. Well, because they killed him too early. I desperately wanted him to come back at the end and have like an awesome hero moment. Yeah, he's too good. We've been really loving Ash's, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Oh, yeah. And I just, actually, at work, while I was working today, I listened to a podcast done by, I can't think of the actor's name, but he played Lex Luthor on Smallville. Oh, he's great. He is great. He's, and he, he's a really cool, like, like weird nerd, too. Yes. Yeah. And he has a very, he has a really good interview podcast. It's Michael something. Okay, okay. And he, his latest episode was Bruce Campbell, and so it's just shooting the shit for an hour and a half with Bruce Campbell and it's <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. He's one you of those know, that dude rules. Like he was like the best part of, of that, that show of that for show. sure. Yeah. For sure. He was super duper good. Alright Jess. So oh yeah. So my Mad Max now has a long beard and long hair. Oh so he's not a he's not an uncharted guy. Anymore. Yeah he doesn't look like uncharted anymore. That's okay. Yeah, I think Bruce was stoned at least for the first part of it. He he seemed to he seemed to straighten up a little bit oh, towards yeah, the end. Yeah. But even him high is still like a lot of fun to listen to. He's very co he's still very coherent. He's a he is a vocal proponent of marijuana though, which I was like, great, good on you, buddy. He's so good. Hey, I liked Tom Hardy as Max. I mean, Mel was great too, but. Mel is problematic. 
Yay. <laughs> to put it to put it super duper gently. In the seventies and early eighties, fine. Oh yeah. Shit up through the up yeah. through the early to mid nineties. Yeah. I like to pretend Say, I'm if you're looking to gain the favor of the gods, you could always yeah. do a death like run. No, but it'd be sweet if you were named after Jess. Uh, from Mad Max. Oh yeah, no, that's on the on that podcast. He, Bruce has had to fire directors because he's a producer, and he was talking about that on the podcast that like he's had he's had directors show up and they just weren't they weren't up to snuff, and he, and he even said like I feel shitty about it, but it's like we're we're here to do a job and they weren't doing the job. Yeah. Yeah, they were pieces of shit. Yeah, he one of I know one of the directors, like he just wasn't it sounded like he one of the directors he just was not vibing with, like their senses of humor were totally different. And then the other director was giving him no feedback. And so he had to like he, he you know, he he said he hated doing it, but he had to big dog this director and be like, Okay, I guess we're just doing two takes of every scene and let's go. Cause cause the director was giving him nothing. Yeah. Up ahead? That's Gas Town. I am not ready for Gas Town yet. No. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I don't think Watertown is in this one, or at least I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I can't shoot. I can't. Guzzoline is, uh, is gas. I can't remember what Watertown is called. It's okay, we're fine. This is nothing. This camp is pretty intense, though. What is the rating on this camp? It's only a two-star camp, so it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah, well, there's a bunch of one guys. It's okay. This doesn't involve the computer. I got, I got a weak little baby computer. Oh shit. Okay, I was not ready for this. I was clearly not ready for this. What do you mean? The Nintendo Switch? I don't know if that has any- Jesus Christ, I'm dying. I was super not ready for this camp. Holy shit. Never mind. Wow. I kind of want to reload. This is so bad. Alright, well that does it for me. Fuck. Try again, Matt. Not that camp. Fuck that. Unless I go in with my sniper rifle first. I might do that. Well, yeah, I wasn't gonna stop the stream. Fuck it, I'm done. Never mind, guys. Good night. Cancel. It's over. Um, I would like to know what episodes those were too, because so far the show has been great. I've oh, been yeah. no, top to bottom. I've been a big fan of of Ash vs Evil Dead. Both of us, yeah. It's so silly. Like, I mean, you are glorious. Oh, well, you know what though? It it yeah, it does it does have like a goofy sensibility to it, but I do I really really appreciate that they don't. They don't forget their horror roots. Like the show stops and gets scary sometimes. Yep. Pablo is wonderful and Kelly is amazing. Lucy Lawless is killing it. She's so much fun. Oh sh yeah, what the hell is his name? Fuck. I can't think of it. Yeah, the yeah the the six million dollar man is Ash's dad, and he just crushes it. Here we go. Lee Majors, thank you, Tad. Lee motherfucking Majors, he is crushing it. He's so game for everything, which is amazing because the show is insane. Kyo. So yeah. So out in the wild like this, uh, if I come across rando bad guy cars, I can kill the drivers and then kill the car and then get scrap for killing the car. And scrap is how you buy upgrades for your car and for max. It is like, it's like GTA, but just the driving and just the punching and shooting. Like, 
There's not a golf mini game that I'm gonna play. There, are, actually, there are some some little spin-off things. There's like um, there's like minefields that you can clear, and you have to use a different car to clear the minefields. And use the little dog. The dog can smell the mines, and he helps you find them. The dog does not die. The dog very much almost died. Got the car. Oh, and you know what? I'm still in this. I've done enough good in this territory that when I kill a car, I have like little helper guys in the nearby town that collect the scrap for me. So I don't even. I can just kill cars and get scrap for it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's really. This game is really cool in that you have a, a very tangible impact on the areas you are like working in yeah. so this this yellow outlined area this is jeet's territory jeet is a fucking metal faced guy who lives at uh at this outpost well no, he's got he's got shards of metal stuffed into his face yeah he's he's a little fucked up and crazy but he's mostly okay um the bad guy of this game it's actually kind of funny the you know, Ted, every part of australia will kill you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole continent is out to get you. Oh, my first my favorite Mad Max is Road Warrior. Oh yeah. For sure. The one is very good though. I love one also. Yep, that's a cool that's a cool theory. Who? who went nuts and grew up and started calling himself Max. Alright, here we go. Check out my sniper rifle. I'm like I'm like the fucking DC sniper. That shouldn't be a problem. Oh and I and I loved Fury Road also. Fury Road I I actually don't know how to rank that in comparison. Oh yeah dude. I think the, yeah, that score by uh, Junkie XL, yeah. which gets uh, which gets used. Oh, so movies. Hang on. Oh, that doesn't work like that. Okay, because it's not a guy. It's like an automated thing. Oh man, I loved. I thought Fury Road was a fucking slam dunk and one of the best action movies of the last decade. Easy, but easy. Okay. See, I need to I need to figure out how to shut down the perimeter defenses because this is what's fucking me up. George Miller. Do your thing. On my way. Did he? He use a different camera to shoot it in black and white. That's cool. I want to see that black and white cut. We should get the Blu-ray. I'm fucking cuckoo about that movie. Fucking love that movie. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, collectibles. It's not in. It's in my. I think it's in my log. So one thing that's cool too. Statistics capture mode. Okay. I don't know where it is. You can collect, so there, there's a, oh shit, hello. Oh, my heart, dude, it's always a blood moon around here. Shit's, no. Yeah. Oh yeah, sometimes they just get scared of you and bail. Okay, where, story missions. Missions, encounters, intel encounters. Okay. What? What camp am I near? Because I collect black sand. So, on the map, you can find wastelanders who are scoping out camps, and they will. Uh, they will give you intel about the camps like they'll tell you oh there's a secret entrance over here or oh you can disable their flamethrowers because there's a gas tank exposed over oh, here okay, okay. i don't think i've collected intel for this camp though okay right because it's called black sands shit yeah i'm not the map. huh i like the map 
The map's great. Very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll try this one. Yeah, I want to show you... Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to... Fuck it, I'm just going to play. What did you tell me wrong, Ted? Where did you lead me astray? Hey, Rikyo's here! What up, buddy? Shouldn't you, shouldn't you be studying, Rikyo? <laughs> that is the, that is the one thing I hate about streaming on the PS4 is because it's on the headset. I can't pick up your audio. We can, uh, like a little bit. I think you're because well because the mic is right here. You're pretty loud. It's not a bad thing. What is this camp? Is this the camp I was trying for? Yes. It is. Oh, but I want to talk to this Intel baby over here. Oh, Rikio, you're such a such a brat. You're a brat. <laughs> oh, brother. Oh man, those snipers are long-reaching. Uh. Well, yeah. Last. Ooh. <laughs> represents swole. True story. Godzilla represents Pierre, yep. Swole versus Pierre. It's that classic tale. Tale is old as time. Fuck it, who needs intel? I can just do this. Yeah, the spikes aren't just awesome looking. I mean, they are awesome looking. But they're also there to, uh, to defend against borders. Hop-ons. You'll have some hop-ons. <laughs> I think I think Rikio is yanking our chains. He's a bit of a rascal. The purple paint over here. Yeah. Oh, it's purple. It's colorful smoke because I've alerted their defenses. What? It is, but they're kind of jabronis. Like, I'm smoking them. They were, but they weren't. Yeah, we'll get this guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the fire boys at the other place, they were their towers were too strong or something. But this is doable. I don't think he knows These shooting days are over! Mother is obviously Mrs. Fox. Yep. <laughs> Ricky, I missed your special uh, version of chaos. For a sec. It's bubbly. Oh yeah, so let me show you my harpoon. I it makes me so sad. Every time the car gets I it's it's really upsetting. Every time his car gets de destroyed, I'm just like, "Oh god. Why would you do that?" That's how you that's how you know this is a barbar a barbaric shithole of a future. Leave me here then. I'll spend some quality time with my Angel combustion. <laughs> oh, did you, see, did you see the new movie, Rikio? Oh, yeah. We've been wanting to see Isle of Dogs. Get through there. It's not showing in any of our theaters, though, yet. Yeah. Doing it's supposed to go... It's supposed to go wide this this weekend. They're doing... Yeah, yeah. They're doing, like... Um, like a slow, slow... Right, they did slow, select theaters wide. first. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, I do love that Owen Wilson one. Oh, yeah, the thing where they replace lightsaber noises with him. Ooh, these are different goons. I've never seen these colorful of goons before. So when they do triangle, that's like a warning to uh, do a parry, and so I usually wait for them to do that so I can counter it real quick and buys me some time. Oh, 
Yeah, this is, uh, these are stank. <laughs> Sam Rockwell's fin finest hour. Um, yeah, I love that. I, I remember, too, I remember watching Ninja Turtles, the movie, late in life. And being like, is that fucking Sam Rockwell? Sam Rockwell. Thinking it wouldn't be. <laughs> and then you look it up and it absolutely was Sam Rockwell. It's so funny. She's fine. I'll just relay what she says. Uh, nobody wants to hear what I say anyway. Everyone always wants to hear what you say because you're cool and funny. You fucker. No. Yes. Deal with it, dick. What do we need here? Oh, I can't. Well, let me ask then, Riccio, did you um, did you just see Isle of the Dogs, or are you just discovering Wes Anderson? I know on some level he's he's uh, because we, we've talked about this a little bit on Discord. Um, I think he's in the process of discovering him because he really liked Grand Budapest Hotel. Sweet, sweet scrap. Give me that scrap. What's your favorite? Yeah, what's your favorite one, Riccio? That you've seen... Actually, which ones have you seen so far? And out of them, which one's your favorite? I did like it. Ah. Oh, my bad. I thought that was the one that kind of pulled you into... Uh, Wanderson's whole <laughs> shtick. I mean, it's kind of an acquired taste. I don't think it makes you a, a dumbass. Shiv the shit out of that guy. Oh, he is kind of like a family-friendly Tarantino. I get that. And a little twee. Shit. Oh, shit. Stop it. Oh, fuck you. I was in the middle of a sweet finisher. Well, dude, Rushmore, Rushmore was my introduction to Wes Anderson. And yeah, I think that was my first one, too. Rushmore is amazing. You can skip Bottle Rocket. Bottle, I couldn't get through Bottle, Bottle Rocket. Rocket's kind of stupid. But watch Rushmore. Life Aquatic fucking rules. Yep. I'm with you on that, Tad. Yep. That is one of my That's, favorite movies of all time. Yep, period. It's yeah. just a great flick. Wow, that was a baby shit easy camp. I had to just kill all the guys here. That was stupid easy. There's a ton of secrets so I need to find. I want to. Ooh, I leveled it up. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't get Life Aquatic. Because if you look up reviews of it, it kind of got panned. Really? Yeah, it's it's not well liked. That's probably why Benny likes it so much. <laughs> why haven't they made an Esteban meme yet? That's a great question. Esteban, or just they've done the crazy eyes. The oh yeah, the the, the water eyes. sickness yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, my favorite. He's got crazy eyes. Yep. <laughs> my favorite. Oh, I don't need this right now. My favorite gag, I think, is still pretty early on when. His, his friend... Oh, shit. Shit, shit. I didn't mean to do that. Goo. We're fine. Uh, Ew, I did not like Lost in Translation. I liked it okay. Ew. Gross. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, Zisu's fun. Oh yeah, yeah, Ricky. If you don't like if you don't like Life Aquatic, you have to switch majors. You fuck. I bet Ricky also likes how scientifically accurate all the marine. Oh yes. Oh uh, yep. All all of all of the uh, fish facts and that are 100% legit. They definitely did not stop motion animate a bunch of crazy cartoon fish at the end. Yeah. Oh, that's the exit. What else? Okay. 
Yeah, geez, there's a survey crew part, two scraps, and one more insignia. I'm getting all that shit before I leave. Oh, Ted, are you talking about Mystic River, the movie that has everyone ever in it? Oh, everyone is in that movie. Yeah. It's like, it's like the answer to every trivia question yeah. because fucking every single big actor of all time is in it. That and Tombstone. Everyone's in Tombstone. Everyone is in Tombstone. Yeah. Tombstone's great though. I fucking love Tombstone. I never saw Mystic River. I... I own Mystic River, but I had never seen it either. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, whole bear. Sweet baby Hobbs. Oh, he brought us a toy. What a good toy boy. Jesus. Was there a... That's weird. Huh. <laughs> I am I am not wild about Sean Penn. I don't hate him, but I'm never like, oh good, Sean Penn's here. I mean he beat the shit out of Madonna. Yeah, he's kind of a douche nozzle. I guess we're just a it's hard to see that. it's hard to see past that. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Dre beat a woman and shoved her down the Ooh, stairs and locked yeah. her in the basement for a while. Yeah, it's... Man, it's fucked. Every, everybody... Jimmy Page, uh... Oh, Jimmy Page had, like, a sex slave. Yeah, a 14-year-old sex slave that he eventually married. Ugh, it's all so bad. It's all terrible. Everything is terrible. Every Everything, yes. Everything is terrible. Everything, thank you, Jeff. That's a good point, Ted. I don't know if anybody says, oh, good. Oh, great. Sean Penn's here. Maybe it's not just me. <laughs> Thank goodness Sean Penn is here to save us all. Right. All right. I got one more piece of scrap. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I haven't seen Carlito's Way. Oh, yes. You haven't seen Carlito's Way. I have not. That's uh, Al I'm, Pino, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm really great. I'm really uh, crime movies are a big blind spot for me in general. Great, they are great. I love Goodfellas. Carlito's Way is that more of a heist movie or is that just like a straight crime drama? Are, you're not asking me, are you? I'm asking everyone. Can they hear me? Can I is again? Carlito's Way a crime drama or a heist movie? Ted says, Ted says neither. Well, then what is it? It's a it's a musical comedy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, Ted says it's a character study. That's I think I think there's a lot of overlap there though. Okay, so I cleared out this camp. I cleared out a hundred percent. I'm gonna take down this scarecrow next. So basically, basically you you go around the wasteland and because Max's end goal in this game uh, is awesome because it's just to build the sickest car ever. And then just drive off into nothing until he fucking dies because Mad Max is an insane broken person. And so in order to build this dope ass car oh look that's a that's a wasteland toilet. Sure it, is. Easy chair with a tire and, and poo poo flies coming out. You know that's a crapper. <laughs> you know that's a crapper, my man. Uh no yeah. So in order to build the dopest car of all time. Oh, and since I cleared this place out, now this camp now good gu good guys are taking over this camp and they will send me scrap periodically. This is a cool game. How can you trust them? I mean, you trust them enough. Okay. And so, yeah, I do. I do all these favors, and I help out these good guy camps to get upgrades for my car, which also helps me do more things. It's that very, it's that very feedback loop of okay. RPGs and other games where it's like, do this many quests and then cash them in, so you can do bigger quests and cash right. in more stuff. Um, which it is. It's just that feedback loop. It it doesn't really try to hide it, but I'm okay with that because it's fucking Mad Max, and I've always wanted to drive a muscle car around the desert and lose my mind. Mm -hmm. Mad Max is a good character. I like I like this character a lot. Uh, if I if I ever lose my mind, I'll probably be in a muscle car in the desert, <laughs> just doing peyote and like punching cactuses and shit. When I when I eventually lose it, Jess. Look, look for me out in, like, Death Valley. I'll follow you. I'll, I'll supervise. Okay, great. So Carlito's Way is about a guy that gets out of prison and does his best to be a decent human being, but the old neighborhood 
keeps harassing him with crime. Oh, yeah, he's got, okay. he's got a ton of, like, crime connections, which amazes me that he wasn't murdered in the first place. Like, you know, because he's got all these connections, and he's connections. out. Oh, okay. He was, like, a stool pigeon? Well, no, 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 no. Em emphasis on the stool? <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. I don't remember. I watched that movie with my dad, and I was like, yeah. Nice! <laughs> He's a coke dealer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so he had info on everybody. Right, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. I need to. I need to catch up on my. Ooh, we got a bad boy over here. Nighty night, motherfucker. Oh. Hope you weren't planning on being alive, idiot. <laughs> Thank you. It's very satisfying. I sure did. Well, here's the thing. You don't really like design design it. You um you buy upgrades for it. The main design choices you get to make on the car are you have like four different choices of body and then you unlock paint jobs. And so I've got the the matte black paint. The first paint job is just rust. Matte ferret black. Matte ferret black. You got it. So yeah. So there's different like so spikes. Um, you start with none. Here I'll preview them. You start with none. I've un I unlocked um, just spikes on the sides there, which was helpful. But then eventually I unlocked spikes everywhere. Nice. So it's so hop-ons, most of my hop-ons die immediately, <laughs> which is fucking radical. Um, but yeah, like you can upgrade the big cow catcher on the front, which I got the baddest cow catcher that I have that I have access to. There's some badder ones later. Uh, there's armor. So when I started, I had no armor. Then I had they call them baby bars, and now I've got the big buddy bars. It's great. It's a great game. It is a great game. It really, it really speaks to my inner darkness. <laughs> Build a murder car and then murder people. Yay! <sighs> Ricky, you won't accept us. What? <laughs> Wait, what? Ted, thank you. We do have a volatile relationship since our... <laughs> Since our adoption, that's Ted, true. You're not a babby. That's are true. You, Ted, you're not you're I not babby enough. I to know how old you are, but I know Riccio is a bit younger, and <laughs> I'm, if my darkness is closer to a beige, I am good with that. That actually that actually gives me uh, a weird amount of hope. <laughs> Maybe that's a good. Electric beige. Ooh, electric beige. Your that's your mom's favorite color, Neon right? Neon beige. Neon beige. Riccio, I know you're an edgy teenager, <laughs> you little fucker. <laughs> All right, don't encourage him. And Riccio, don't encourage Jess. I also like to give him mixed signals. You do, you do give some mixed signals. <laughs> His adoption is either the best or worst thing that's ever happened to you, yeah. depending on your mood. <laughs> Yeah, right? Isn't that the law? You have to be younger than your adoptee. Alright, where's the sniper? Oh, I'm a sniper. I'm so cute. Guess what, motherfucker? I'll snipe you right back. What do you think about that? DC style, motherfucker. Damn. Are these the boys from earlier? Are the boys back in town? Hmm. Well, these are... Okay, so the bad guy of this game at the beginning... Here, I'll put it on a cooler pause screen. Uh, is is uh scabrous scrotus which is uh what the fuck is the guy in fury road the bad guy in that i can't remember well it's that it's that guy's like kid he eventually i guess he had oh, a okay. he somehow had a kid who was able to grow up but he had all this gross apparatus on him still uh and in the opening cinematic you chainsaw him through the dome but which is great it's great that you did that right but, here's the thing, his gang is still active. Just because you killed him doesn't mean his gang doesn't exist anymore, so you're fighting his gang. Um, and he has a very uh, devious and dangerous underling called Stank Gum. And he's bad news. Uh, 
He well, he's, here's the thing. It's funny at first, but then you find out his name is Stank Gum because it, all his teeth uh... are just like they're like black needles, and it just smells like death. And I'm he, thinking Stank Gum. Oh no, Stank Gum. No, okay. And he wears a mask made out of human faces. So yeah, it's it's dark game. <laughs> Great. Yeah, live with Ava Green, Ted. There you go. You think Mad Max is just an edgelord teenager that never grew out of that phase before the apocalypse? No, because in Mad Max 1, he's a happy family dude. Um, and oh, yeah, no, he's like a police he, officer. He's a, he's a cop. Yeah. He's a cop, and he's got a beautiful wife and a lovely kid, oh, and then he oh, loses everything, oh, including his fucking mind. Yep. And it's awesome. And it's a good movie, Ricky. Yep. Maybe that. He constantly. That is yeah. one But that's that's part of it, man. He just loses everything. I mean, he. D I mean, I get it. I understand. But yeah, M Max was an adult with the family, and yeah, and was happy. He's a happy, like, well-adjusted person. Even yeah. even in the yeah. like the the semi-apocalypse, like shit had gotten bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there were still there were still there was remnants still of society. Of yep, it was on the way out. It was clearly on the way out. Yep. That's why I try to keep kids. Yeah, the first one's fucking sweet. The first, the first one's good because it's a. It, stay out of the gist. Yeah, yeah. The world is the world is dangerous at that point, but he didn't give up and just go into the outback yet. No, you're right. Road, Road Warrior. Road, Road Road Warrior. He he just fucking loses his gourd and and bails for this crazy shithole world. Lose your woman, lose your mind, yeah. Our wives are our lives. Our wives are our lives. It's a South Park yeah. reference. And a Tom Hardy reference. And a Tom Hardy reference. True story. It's a, it's a twofer. All right, what should I go after next? How about this camp? Ooh, that's a three-skull camp. I don't know if I'm ready for that. You might not be ready for that one. This is a two-star. That's a two-skull camp. I could. I'm for sure ready for that. What's this? Another two-star camp. Yeah, it's closer. Go on. I'm going for it. Wreck Hill. Oh yeah, and so this ghoul man is like your buddy because he thinks you're a saint, and it it's his holy mission to build this car. This car is called the Magnum Opus, and so your your fates just happen to align perfectly. And so this weird hunchback mutant man is like, "Hey, saint, I'll build you a car." Is he like a um? One of those boys? One of those, uh... No, he's not a war boy. Oh, he's totally... Okay. He's totally unaffiliated from... From all that stuff. What the okay. fuck was the bad guy's name? His son was Rictus Erectus. I really cannot think of the main bad dude's name. He was like White Darth Vader. It was genius. Oh, he was in the first movie, too. He was the bad guy. He was Toe Cutter in the first yeah. movie, yeah. He's Toe Cutter. Yep. Oh, yeah, anybody that needs to go to bed, go to bed. I just want to get in my requisite two hours. I'll, I'll stream until 1230. More like Shrek Hill. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I almost I almost canceled altogether because... That was frustrating. Well, and it was also just exhausting. Right. You saw me, you saw me sweating my, my balls off. Wrangling. I wrangled a GameCube, a Super Nintendo, a Wii, a fistful of cords... Unplugging shit and plugging shit back in. It's gonna be. I'm not going to bed either, Rickyo. Who's the edge lord now, Ricky? Oh, you're using the motherfuck word. He's a backer. Oh, he did. You fuck. You fucking fuck. <laughs> oh shit. Ooh, I need. I'm. I'm gonna take a little sippy of water, y'alls. I'm a thirsty boy. Stay put. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. One of the oh shit! Bad time to take a sip of water. This was a terrible choice. Cause he's a little he's a little dingus. They do have cool cars. They're sweet, and you can you can um you can get their cars too. Like I I I. Mhm. Mm yeah, and it's you know I don't. You do, you do. No you, way. Okay, so yeah, it's it is. It's very, it's very like Grand Theft Auto, but cooler. 
Because it's Mad Max, it's cooler than Grand Theft Auto. They're making Shrek 5? Oh my gosh, Rikio, you have to Or we'll dr we'll fly down to Florida and watch it with you. Oh, that sounds amazing. If I, what? they disappeared. <laughs> they get scared. They get scared and puss out. It's kind of like it's it's kind of awesome. It makes me feel like a big badass well, boy. That they won't when you when you advance the game. Well, that's yeah. Later, other areas have tougher dudes. It's kind of cool because you get to know you get to know these different gangs. There's the buzzards. There's roadkill. There's Stank Gums guys, and I think there's one other game. Yeah, no, Stank Gums sounded hilarious until they reveal some backstory about him, and then it's like, oh, that's not as oh, funny. <laughs> no, he's a freak. Oh, don't back over the cliff. Oh god, what am I aiming at? Okay. Yeah, Shrek, man, it'll never die. What the fuck keeps him? Oh yeah, it's got layers, etc. Oh, I missed. I'm going to bed. Okay, go to bed. You made me die, Jess. Get oh, out of here and go to bed. I made you die? It's your fault. It's not my fault for being bad at video games. <laughs> Just kidding. It's my fault for being bad at video games. Fault. Yeah. So bad at video games. I'm a dumb idiot. So, what are you gonna do? I love you. Thanks for staying up with me. Night, guys. Good night, Jess. <laughs> oh, Rikyo called you a fucking scrib. <laughs> Rikyo, Rikyo's such a little devil. I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Hang on. She said, "Cause you're not on the mic, so say it, say it into, say it into this." I'm gonna kill you. Good. Bye. Bye. Nobody said anything about Gamera, I, I don't think. Oh, I see. Women gamers. We can talk about Gamera. We can talk about Shrek. We can talk about anything. I want to talk about all the things. I got to bring my, my, my Prosecco closer, though. Ah, yes. I have less control over, over what we look like here. I, I don't love this framing. My PlayStation 4 camera is not a great cinematographer. I'm going to keep doing this, though. Blimp. I know it's it's never gonna be out of my head. That is fucked up that they're making Shrek 5. That seems uh uh like too much. <laughs> no, I believe it. I, I absolutely believe they'd make Shrek 5. Why wouldn't they? I don't think Shrek 4 like bombed at the box office. So there's no incentive to not make it. <sighs> Fuck. I hit R2. He won't shoot. Fire. Okay, I must be out of ammo. I'm out of ammo. That's the problem. Oh, boy. Wow. Wow. Make sure you have rounds for your sniper rifle before you try to snipe somebody. Uh, thanks for watching Game Tips with Matt. Learn how to win your games by knowing that you should have ammunition for your weapons. <sighs> yeah, this isn't great, but... It is. What are you doing, Jess? You said you, you promised you would go to bed. I know, I'm just giving you a hard time. I love you. I'm so glad to see you. Alright, so now I gotta do this the old-fashioned way, which is to say... I'm yelling at everybody forever. Okay, that's what I do now. Is I'm, oh! Fuck! They're on a cement pylon. This is a real trouble. Always. There we go. Fuck y'all. I love the harpoon gun. It's so good. So what I'm gonna do... Yeah! Suck a dick, snipers! I wasn't flipping you guys off, I was flipping off the sniper. Don't get it twisted. What? I'm still getting sniped! What the heck? What a bunch of little stinkers! I need more sniper ammo, Jessica. Why... Jess... Jess is gonna kill you, Rikio. I gotta get out of here! This is a real poop show. Au revoir!
I took for granted. I had a lot of sniper ammo at one point, and I just took for granted forever that I would just have shitloads of sniper ammo. But guess what? It's not the case. Oh, Ricky was already offended. <laughs> oh, I think he was offended by my flip offery. I'll do my thing. This game did see me coming a mile away. You know, I was smoking this game like a doobie last weekend, and now it's starting to... I'm starting to get to some tougher stuff. I was kind of just going around and, and fucking up all the easy stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. I need to do some easier stuff. I love you, baby. Good night. Let's go down to this camp. And actually, I'm going to teleport to this thing. There's fast travel points. The fast travel points are very cute because they're uh, abandoned camps that have a hot air balloon. So you go up in this hot air balloon and you scope out the surrounding area, and then it's also a fast travel point. All right. All right. So... Ooh, that would be good. I could do that. I could do this. I need to clear up... This is another t mission type, these convoy routes. Um, so the green ones are convoy routes that I've killed off the convoy. Red ones still have an active bad guy convoy, and those are a lot of fun. That's just a, a just a parade of bad guy cars to to decimate. So hopefully I'll run into those, but for the time being, I'm going to try out this other camp. Are you sure you can handle this contraption cue? It goes by hot air. Oh, then you can. Uh, which Bond? What? Which? Which Bond movie is that? Because I think I've seen that one. Q's great. Sir, convoy of epic oh, here's that convoy. Hello, boys. Octopussy. I think I've seen Octopussy. It's been a long time. What was it? Was it TBS that used to marathon those? Are they going away from me? Nope. Lady Night, bitch. Catch so with a convoy, I want to eventually catch up with the head of it. Um, because it's got a lot of little defender boys, who are definitely more. These are these are rougher customers to contend with. The head of the convoy is actually pretty wienery. So what I want to do is catch up with it and just and just disable that thing, and then kind of deal with the rest of the convoy. And I think my pal Harpoon will help with that. Well, oh yeah, and I have an upgraded Harpoon that lets me just tear tires off, so it's like, bye, dummy. The Harpoon also will just yank dudes out of the car, which is awesome. What can you tell me about? There we go. I don't have any shotgun ammo. Shotgun ammo would be so choice. Oh, here we go. We'll just yank the driver out. But then I got to deal with all these other, all these other jabrones. Ooh, including. So it doesn't. It, I was hoping the. I was hoping the spikes would kill all jumpers, but I guess there's still a few. There's still a few exposed points where jumpers can pop on. This is, this is a big convoy. I can see why I didn't tackle this sooner. Alright. We got a great big convoy. Parking through the night. Come on, join our convoy. Ain't she a beautiful sight? There we go. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop tires off everybody. The, uh... The harpoon's got a, a kind of long-ish cooldown time. So the these things that look like go karts are are rougher customers because they have oh shit here we go I was hoping to avoid this part so the car's in such bad shape that I need my little hunchback to fix it. 
But then I found this kind of like weird loophole where if I'm kind of adjacent to my car, they won't, they unwisely won't really attack my parked car. Which makes no sense, but I'm gonna use that to my advantage and just punch these dudes. What good? Ah, sassifying. Oh, <laughs> he is doing a Chinese fire drill. Mm. <laughs> I don't feel great about that. Okay, oh! So, the really sweet part, I mean, Come other on, than God. just... It's a mission to complete, which uh, ups your... Ups the... No. I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. It lowers the threat in a region. Oh, I need to destroy that car first. Now, that's what all these missions do. They, they lower the threat in the area, and they let the good guys prosper. Um, and then it also unlocks upgrades for my car. With convoys, what's really neat is that the head car of a convoy has a unique hood ornament that I can either put on the front or back of my car. So on the back, I've got that, that sweet, like, ram skull. And on the front, I have a different skull. Because it's Mad Max, it's mostly skulls. And of course, all the scrap I can eat. Uh, but yeah, I want, I want this new hood ornament. Give me that shit. Yay. This is, this game's addictive. I've, I've played, this is one of those games you pop in and you say, oh, I'll play it for an hour. And then you play it for four. It's a little dangerous. Because there's always there's always one more thing to do. Let's see. Let's see what kind of hood ornament I got. And seize the supplies. Oh, that see that's I guess that's that's my first non-skull hood ornament. And I'm not loving it. I'm gonna lose so much scholarship money tomorrow, but I don't even give a shit. Riccio, oh my god, please do not sacrifice your scholarship money for this. Please, sir. I send these to YouTube. You can watch them later. I don't... Oh, I would feel the worst. I'd feel unimaginably bad if you lost the scholarship for this. I mean, I'm flattered. But this... is not worth it. Yo, shit. Oh, this guy's still here. <laughs> Not anymore. That's true. You can't talk to a YouTube video. That is a very good point. I mean, well, you know, you could talk to a YouTube video. It just won't respond. <laughs> I have a lot of scrap. Can I buy anything cool with my scrap? Oh, I have new car stuff. Oh, just that new, that new boring hood ornament. It's not very good. I don't want that. Did I do my sniper upgrade? No. Let's do that. Well. On that note, I should go to sleep. So, okay, bye, I guess. Yeah, no, Ricky, don't lose scholarship money for this, please. I would feel the worst. I got my suspension upgrade. Ooh, I can get better tires. Yeah, I'm gonna take those tires. Give me them tires, son. Wide treadies. Now we're talking, baby. I got the best rims I can have. Got the best suspension. I, ooh. Oh no, I have the best exhaust, okay. Oh, I could get a better, I could get a marginally, a, a teeny bit better engine. I'm thinking I'm going to wait. All right. Let's cause some more trouble. Oh, and I don't have that much, I spent a bunch of scrap anyway, so I got to save up anyhow. Um, Have I tried this camp? That looks like a pretty easy camp. Oh, and that was my next target anyhow. So yeah. Hitting up that next camp. 
Thanks for stopping in, Rick. Yo, it's, it's good to see you, man. Good luck on them exams, son. That is that is maybe the one thing I don't miss about college life. I, I really enjoyed college life, but the uh, the pressure of exams is, you know, not like awesome. See, there's these there's these loot points here, but I think they might be up above. Whenever you introduce a verdict. <laughs> oh, Jess, you monster. Jess is still singing the Smash Mouth song from the Shreks. All of the Shreks. Yeah, oh, I'm out of. Fuck, I'm out of. Oh, that's okay. This is not a good <laughs> That harpoon gun is the tightest. Baby likes harpoon gun. I guess the, li the I guess the range is kind of limited on it, understandably. Damn. So, without. Oh no, Smash Smash, Smash Mouth is trash. I think I think uh, I think we're all on the same page there. Ooh, I'm doing not great health-wise. Boy, these little wiener camps are pretty... Some of them are really well defended. Prior to this, most of the camps I have come across were pretty... Pretty easy breeze to, uh... To hammer down their defenses. Oh, fuck. Yep, nope, that was dumb. I even saw... So that shimmer, that weird, like, colorful shimmer is my warning that there's a sniper around, and I still took a big swig of water. Fuck! Boo! I was nowhere near that camp. Leave me alone. <laughs> Max's car runs on gamma jets because it's fucking awesome. If you had the option, wouldn't you take it? Yeah, that's the thing. So this game as far as I can tell, is is canon with all the movies. My first thought was that it was a it was like Hannibal, where it was just a remix of the source material. Um, but the fact that they talk about his name escapes me, uh, the baddie from Fury Road, and it t it seems to take place at some nebulous point after that. Uh, yeah, it's like, is Furiosa gonna be here? Like, it would be kind of sweet to run across her because she's a cool character. Um, but I haven't yet. I think they, I think they are staying away from things that are directly from Fury Road, which is interesting. In a lot of ways, this game reminds me of the, the Batman Arkham games. And Morton Joe, thank you, Ted. Oh my God, that was driving me insane. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the, the, the villain is, is Morton Joe's son and, uh, but yeah, all the all the references to Fury Road have been kind of side, you know, uh, oblique. They've been oblique references. Not there hasn't been any direct stuff, which is interesting. It makes me think. I feel like this takes place five or ten years after the events of Fury Road. So I don't think I don't think we'll deal with Furiosa or uh cuz at at the end of at the end of Fury Road she kind of took over in Morton Joe's territory so I don't think we'll deal with that territory either. This is kind of the whole world map and I don't think it includes their old stronghold. Max does deserve a break. He has a t fucking terrible life. <laughs> that's why oh man, that's that's why he's running from everything. He's a, he's a destroyed person. It is uh, weirdly thrilling to jump into the shoes of just somebody who is just lost, who's just gone. He's like, fuck it, fuck everything. I think that's why I'm drawn to the character. All right, let's, you know, you know, I might, we got a, we got a minefield there and a minefield there. Though there's a bunch of shit here. I might, you know, I'm going to work on some of this stuff. 
I don't want to have Max's life either, but I kind of, I like vicariously stepping into that. It's it's excite It's an exciting premise for a game. Because he is such a, a ruined mess of a person who's in this hellish landscape where it's just survive. I think, because that's that's the people love. People love the the zombie post apocalypse setting. Um, Jess's sister loves loves the the zombie post apocalypse thing and and uh, even has like a bug out bag, you know, with and 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 and, and I get it because it's it's a it's a very weird and specific form of escapism when it's when it's post apocalyptic like this when you when you're just a person trying to survive in real life it's obviously not fun but if you're in kind of a comfy place i understand the escapism of this or even if you're not in a comfy place i think i think the survivalism aspect is appealing because there's no bullshit it's it's not that you're trying to survive in society's rules you're trying to survive in a setting where it's kill or be killed. And I think that's exciting for us because we're trying to survive in a situation where it's like, well, you have to pay rent. You have to pay for groceries. You have to pay your bills. And in order to do that, you got to jump through these hoops. You got to do this shitty job. You got to do this. Whereas in a setting like this, if you need food or shelter, you just go out and fucking take it. And there's something, it's very animalistic and it's dark, but it's also very freeing. And that's super interesting to me. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, there's a lot of shit to do here. I'm going to do some of this stuff. So these these uh, buzzard camps are kind of hidden. So I might try and find that. I think I'm going to grab all three of these first. We got uh, a scarecrow, a scarecrow, and a sniper. And then I'll head south for this. Oh, that's a camp. I'll try that. And then I'll circle back. Yeah, I've got a game plan. Daddy like. Let's go. I like this weird little gremlin man that helps you out too. He's he's a fun character. It's a it He specifically feels like something from a Mad Max movie. It he he makes it feel a little less video gamey and more like a Mad Max story. bad boy here. Hello, sir. <laughs> I do remember Jason Takes Manhattan, and Ted, funny you should mention that, but this Friday, we have a Friday the 13th, and my birthday is coming up on the 16th, so just, uh, just grab me a couple, couple Jason flicks that we don't own, and so we, uh, we're getting, we're getting Jason Takes Manhattan on DVD, and then we're getting uh, Jason Goes to Hell on VHS because it's hard to find on DVD. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna watch some Friday the Thirteenth on Friday the Thirteenth. I'm really Keep excited. An eye on the car. Yes, gladly. It is my sacred. Oh place. yeah, and then that's right. Since we're in Jeet's territory, I automatically get the scrap, which is a really cool feature. The DVD has the unrated version. Fucking sweet, good. Oh, who's this bad boy? I see. Oh, he's getting away. Whatever. It's probably rare because of that. Oh, yeah, we couldn't find we couldn't find a good deal on the Jason Goes to Hell DVD. Which is okay. There's something kind of there's something kind of fun and, and goofy and nostalgic about VHS. Were to describe Jason's general demeanor in Part Eight. How would you describe Jason's general demeanor in Part Eight? Sassy. He is. He's a sassy boy. He is a sassy boy. Cause one of my favorite, one of my favorite little moments in, in Takes Manhattan is when he dunks the dude in the trash can full of muck and drowns him in it, and then just as an extra, like fuck you, he slams the dude's legs against the brick wall. It's so good. That to me is like w maybe the top sassy moment. I'm gonna look for sassy moments though, cause. Oh, Jason's my baby boy. I love Jason, dude. 
Shit is so good. I'm gonna look for sassy moments. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Eight gets a eight gets a bum rap, I think, very unfairly. Top sassy moment is with the gang. I'll have to look for that. It's been a, it's been a minute since I've seen it, so it'll be fun to give it a rewatch. Where is this scarecrow? Totally missed it. Somewhere. He kicks the radio out of his way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, that's totally sassy. What a sassafras. Alright, so I need to figure out how to get up on this plateau. Oh, here we go. Oh, follow the road up the plateau. How's that for a crazy idea? Fuck you! Oh, nope. We gotta harpoon it. Harp it up. He just stands there and lets Julius punch him. Total sass. Oh, yeah. He's a... Oh, man. That's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm geeked to watch both of those. Jason Goes to Hell is, is so fucking weird, and I don't love it, but I'm, I'm excited to watch that again. And I... Jason, Jason Takes Manhattan, I think, is legit wonderful. And I think people are just mad because he doesn't spend the whole movie in Manhattan. But it's like, who cares? It's fun when he's on the boat. Takes Manhattan he has the kill where he literally punches a guy's head off his shoulders. It's beautiful. Jason Goes to Hell is a good horror movie. It's a shitty Friday the 13th. Yeah, I would I would totally agree with that. The, the introduction of like body hopping, demon possession stuff, it just feels like a different movie. It feels like a completely different movie. Oh shit, we got some bad boys. Hello, sirs. <laughs> they turned tail! I have a rep. I like, in this region, I have, I've established a pretty solid rep as a badass. And that's a satisfying thing for a video game to, to give to its players. Earthbound was good about that. With, uh, instead of going into the full turn, if you were high enough leveled, well, some, some bad guys would run away from you. Or alternatively, if you were high enough level, you would just insta-kill them instead of going into the full RPG turn-based battle. There we go. Jason was inserted into the movie over the course of a weekend? No shit! I didn't know that. Oh my god. Weird. That's so weird. That's like how all the Die Hard sequels were not Die Hard scripts originally. They got turned into Die Hard movies at some point. We've talked about Jason Goes to Hell a little bit, but I don't know if we covered that element specifically. If you got other juicy nugs, I want to hear them. I know he's, uh, there's, <laughs> there's like behind the scenes pics of naked Jason in that one, right? Or is that a different one where he's, there's like a weird nudie version of Jason that I, I don't think ends up in the film. See, that darkened track. Screw another convoy route. Oh, cause this, so this territory, so over here is Jeet's territory. I've done a lot here. This is Gut Gash's territory. I haven't done much here. I haven't even revealed this north section yet. Okay, pull up a chair. Fuck yes. Lay it out, my man. Well, I know... We've talked about it a little bit, because I know part of the reason why it's so weird is that it's by the guy who did the first Friday the 13th, and he was like, I'm sick of Jason. I don't want to make more Jason shit. There's a new Jason pick because Kane had to wear his wardrobe over the full body suit. Cool, okay. I'm glad I didn't just imagine that in a fever dream. <laughs> We got a sniper and oh, this car is a real getting up in my grill. What can I do? <laughs> Thank you for your tire, dummy. Oh, my car is in such bad shape. We'll murder this guy. And we'll get somewhere where I can do some more repairs. Fix the car, quick. Huh, sure. So we'll Sean do. Cunningham gets the rights back to Friday. The the Friday series in the early 90s because Paramount's done with the movies after part 8. 
And Cunningham's the original dude, right? Or at least he, he had a hand in, in making the first movie. <sighs> Fix my car. What is this guy's... I can't remember this dude's name. His name is... Oh, like Chum Bucket or something. It's great. Cunningham directed the first movie. Got it, fucking oh, look at, oh, there's the convoy. We got a great big convoy. Now they kind of whizzed by me. I'll catch up with them later. Was that a Mr. Microphone reference? Kind of. Bailed on part two when the money people demanded Jason come back. Fuck yeah, that was... That's what made the scene... Here's the thing. A lot of times the money people are wrong, but in that specific case... Come on, man. Don't Jason's try. the series. Like, hell yeah. You gotta bring Jason back. It does remind me of how John Carpenter wanted Halloween to be an anthology series, and that's why part three is that wacky-ass Season of the Witch story. Yeah, Halloween 3 shit. Yep, exact. yeah. We, we, yeah. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength. And Season of the Witch is, like, a fun, extremely weird movie, but it's not better than Halloween 1 or 2. Sniper down. Okay. Ooh, there's a scrap area there. We'll hit that up, and then we'll hit that, and then we'll hit this. Come to Halloween 3 after the story. Good. Fucking good. I want them anecdotes. Totes my goats. I want them dotes. Cunningham goes to New Line Cinema and tells them, I want to make a Friday the 13th movie. New Line hears that and goes, we're in. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, why wouldn't they be? Makes perfect sense. There we go. Give me your tire, idiot. Cunningham hated Jason. Jason is not his creation. He's the creation of Steve Miner. In Cunningham, in Cunningham's movie, Jason's not an entity. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's all it's all Jason's mom. It that's so we that's so down. strange and funny to me though that he hated Jason. He wants to make stuff that's about Crystal Lake, the area, and nothing to do with Jason. I kind of get that. Like, I can I can sort of get where his head's at, but it's like, at that point, why would you not embrace Jason? Like, I get not wanting to do that for part two, but at part nine, come on, man. Hated Jason because uh, Jason became the icon of the series, completely eclipsing his movie. Okay. Okay, I can, yeah. I kind of get that, I guess. I just I love Jason too much. It's hard. Like this is one of the few cases where it's like I, I almost can't empathize. Oh shit! Okay, I guess uh, I guess we're doing this convoy shit right now. Oh man, my car is fucked up bad. Oh my god, we killed the head of the convoy already. I gotta deal with all these J-Bones, though. So Cunningham... Hang on. Cunningham gets two writers, Adam Marcus and Jay Hughley, to pen this new script Friday the 13th, Heart of Darkness. Oh boy. I roll. <laughs>
Or not. Maybe it was a good script. I shouldn't judge it immediately. Fuck. The car's in bad shape. In it, Jason's heretofore unknown evil brother, Elias, which they turned into his dad, right? Digs up Jason and eats his heart, then proceeds to go on a body hopping rampage across, and I assume that's Crystal Lake or the city. And if you're wondering how Jason had a brother, the script began with a flashback scene of young Jason and his mother copulating to, pro oh God. I mean, I guess, I guess Mama Voorhees was insane. She didn't. She never struck me as that type of crazy, though. Fix it quick. I was gonna kill him. All right. Is this everybody? Okay. Bless your sacred carbs. Huh? We're rolling again. Forgot this cuts. Off. Yeah, yeah, it cuts off the message. Hey, what's up, Ralph? This game is sweet. You are correct, my man. I'm a big, big fan. Uh, Ralph, it reminds me of the Batman Arkham games, but of course with a much higher emphasis on driving. So Sean's peep go out and make this movie, and they kind of get done, but only have 60 minutes of usable footage. Oh, God. New line gets wind of Keep what no Sean's doing, then steps in and says, Dude, if you like the Arkham games, you'll love this. You put Jason in this movie, or we're not going to release it. Yep. Ralph, I heard mixed things about that third one. Uh, most of the criticisms I heard were about it had a super big focus on, ironically, the car. Which it's funny because it just like the cars or the the car is a big focus of this game, but that makes sense thematically because it's Mad Max. When Sean came to them, he didn't say he wanted to make a Jason movie. He said he wanted to make a Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. Of course they assumed what everybody assumed. I, I still I can't I can't shake this thought process of. I get wanting to do something different with part two, but part nine, why don't you go, okay, I get it. Jason's the star. It's crazy. It's crazy. Sean brings in another writer named Dean Lori. Hero of the story. Yeah, the guy who's like, oh, I guess the Jason movie should have Jason. Yeah, who knew? This never stops being satisfying. Or maybe it will at some point, but for now it's real fucking satisfying to just beat the shit out of cars, gut them, and then make your car sweeter. That's a real good feedback loop. Baby like. Or he has a weekend to insert Jason into this movie they've already made. So he came came up with the Jason bookend scenes. So yeah, that would be... I actually don't remember how they end it. But at, at the beginning, you have this sweet... That sweet-ass scene where the FBI sends in an army of dudes to kill Jason. And it's like... Wah. It's like over the top in exactly the right way. The body hopping murderer became Jason and Elias became Jason's father. Okay. Also, Creighton Duke is Lori's invention. Okay. 
Well, I'm hoping to rewatch that on Friday, so I'll be a little I'll be a little more up to speed on that because Crate and Duke, I, I'm I don't remember I don't remember that character so well. But yeah, I mean, come on, Sean Cunningham. At a certain point, you got to be a little realistic and go, okay, Jason's the baby boy everybody's here for. Give me that scrap. Ooh, I got a cash in. So that those tokens I got just now, those are kind of like my level up tokens. I need to find the level up dude. All right. Let's see. Let's see what hood ornament I got. That last one was a real letdown. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. I like human skulls on my car, though. I don't want a cow skull. I'm a psycho, not a cowboy. They hire Kane to be Jason, whose reaction to the script is, God damn, I wish Jason were in this more. Yeah, no shit. Kane's so good. Kane, Kane's such a good Jason. I, I almost want to give those Hatchet movies a second chance, because I know he plays the killer in those. But Jess and I tried to watch Hatchet 1, and I think we made it about 20 minutes in, and it just was bad. It was so bad. like learned the wrong lesson from Jason movies oh, yeah that was our goal originally to hit this thing I like killing convoys I think the I think the I think killing the convoys are my favorite mission type because they feel the most mad maxi or they feel the most specifically they feel the most fury road ish there's a new corner character who actually behaves like Jason, and it's because he was hired with Kane and actually emulated him. That's fucking awesome. I'm kind of geeked. I'm kind of geeked to rewatch 8 and 9 this weekend. Because it's been a while. <laughs> Ralph, that's a great question. Uh, the creature on the back of the car is Chum Bucket. He thinks Max is some kind of saint, and uh, he is helping build this new car. This new car is called the Magnum Opus, and it's Chum Bucket's, like, reason for living. And, uh... And so, so Chum Bucket's fate and Max's fate are kind of intertwined, because the plot of this game is that Max just... Max loses his car at the beginning, because in classic Mad Max fashion, and then his goal is to build the sweetest fucking car ever and just drive it into oblivion. Because Max is a broken person and just wants sweet release. And so it's pretty awesome. We're about to watch Jason Goes to Hell this weekend. Good, Ralph. Good. Watch that shit. No one, oh, no one will discuss this because it makes everybody look bad. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, Chum Bucket. He's, this character, so the story is very video game-ish. But Chum Bucket to me feels very much like a, a really Mad Maxi kind of thing. He's like perfect. In the audio commentary on the DVD, Dean Laurie starts to talk about it, but he either stops himself or Adam Marcus cuts him off, and they never go back to it. Yeah, that's that's fun. That makes me think of the Justice League. I guess the Justice League commentary acts like everything went fine and it was a perfect shoot when it was super duper troubled and a big mess. And it's like fuck, man. Like, the DVD extras, that's the place to air this kind of dirty laundry. Like, that's what people are tuning in for. So fucking go for it. Like, why would you not? But no, Warner Brothers got to pretend like, oh, yeah, it's great. The director's daughter totally didn't die. Adam Marcus acts like this was their intention the whole time. Yeah, fuck that. That's so lame. Be honest about that stuff, because that's a super that's a super interesting story. He tells you getting Jason back at the end is a prize. Oh boy. I mean it is. Because it would be a, it would be it would be just like Season of the Witch if they didn't throw Jason in last second. But yeah, yeah, nobody signs up for a Friday the thirteenth sequel to Nazi Jason. Part two part two was the time to deviate, and they didn't. So, sorry, man. Oh, this is a camp. Duh. This is, a, of course, it's a camp, Matt. You fool. It's fine. We got it. No, we don't. Oh, we kind of do. 
put on it. Ooh, that's a strong tower. That's a strong, strong tower. We'll have to nitro boost it. Bye. Oh, yeah, the, I'm sure the commentaries are a whole legal nightmare. But they always have the disclaimer like, oh, this is this does not represent the views of such and such studio. I thought that was kind of the ultimate, like, get out of jail free card. Fuck. I need some I need some sniper ammo. I got none. Yeah, that sucks. The old Bond laser disc had commentaries for the first few films that have been banned. Wow! Oh there we go. Bye. And Jim was like, what the fuck is this? Oh, I'm stuck on hill. There we go. I love how sturdy this car is. It's such a, it is, it is, the fact that it can take such a beating is such a hilarious change of pace from most games. You can do just the gnarliest shit to this car. And the worst thing you'd have to do is take a two second break and have Chum Bucket fix it. It's such a good setup. It's such a genius setup. It's cra- it's stupid how good this game is. It's a slam- it's a slam dunk. I would definitely say this is an underrated- This is an underrated, overlooked kind of game. It's also a few years old, so maybe I- maybe it had a lot of hype when it came out, but... It's a fucking jam. It's a good- <laughs> It's a good game. Jason Goes to Hell became Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah, man. Sounds like Jason went through development hell, am I right? Yeah, it's it's decent. It's definitely... it's. Give me a lock on that gas tank, man. Oh, I can't. Okay. Is there an intel point near here? No. Ah, shit. Ah! Let me air out your tires and rub down my fine chrome dame. Oh, boy. Chum Bucket's weird. Chum Bucket, I think, wants to have sex with the car, which, like, I don't blame him. It's a dope-ass car. But also, like, calm down, bro. Come on. Yeah, I don't know how to get... I don't know how to deal with this. There's gotta be some alternate way in or something. Ooh, I'm dangerously low on health. I'm going to find water before I deal with this. You said Halloween 3 was silly or fun. I think it's an especially dark movie. Well, it's... Sure. I mean, there's a lot of child murder <laughs> in it. Like, it's not like a wacky goof fest. But it's real strange. It's a very odd movie. Most Halloween... It is! It. You know what? It really... It, it, it takes... It takes the conventions of Halloween, the holiday, and weaponizes it, uh, which I think is it's it's a sweet movie. I kind of just wish it wasn't Halloween three. If it was just a random movie called Season of the Witch, I think people would have liked it. The only cars I'd be truly excited to own are muscle cars, so I think I get what Chum Bucket is about. Yeah, yeah, no, true story. Chum Bucket is secretly the most relatable character in the game. Cause look at this. Look at this spiky-ass deathmobile I've created. It's it's beautiful. Well, that's like I w I've been wanting to play a car game, and I went to pop in Grand Theft Auto V because that's a car game that I own. And then I saw this. I'm like, well, fuck. This is the car game I want. I want the death car. I don't want a normal car. Okay. So where is this little hiding hole? But it's up here. I, I dream, for like, for real legit, I dream of someday owning a Dodge Challenger. That is my favorite car of all time. Like, the new one. I mean, the old one would be amazing, the classic, but I, I like the new ones a lot. And I like, I, I, in some magical future world where I have much, much income, uh, that, that is the car, man. Halloween 3 had no business being released as Season of the Witch. Very interesting. I... I'm... I don't know, man. I think it's... I, I think by by Halloween 2... Halloween had become the Mike Myers show. In my book. I 
everything that Colonel Cochran talks about in the movie is real. That's really what the druids believed back then. It's the truth. It's the true birth of Halloween. What? Halloween 3 has no business being released as... Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, we're on the same page then. It should have just been its own movie. Hang on, the... I... 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 The, the druids wanted child murder? Were they a... Were they a human sacrifice group? I didn't think they were bloodthirsty like that. But I also don't know. I, I haven't done my druid homework. Look at all these nasty bear traps. They're a bunch of bad boys. Dang, there's a bunch. Can I, I don't think I can disarm these either. They would sacrifice people to their gods. Shit, I super did not know that. I do not care for these bear traps. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come try and punch me, idiot. Ow, or throw a rock at me, you dumb jerk. Oh boy, that guy's got bombs on him. He missed, so he's dead. <laughs> what a goon. Well, I think I'm in rage mode. Fuck yeah. Oh, Maximilian. Oh shit! I loot, tried to loot that boy too early. There you go. That's okay, I'll just punch that guy to death. That's the thing, Batman's like, ooh, I'll, I'll just knock him out cold. Max gives zero shits and just murders guys, and it feels a little more honest, because, like, if you beat a guy up until he's unconscious and then leave him in, you know, a super cold night, he'll probably just die anyway. <laughs> Slow and painful. Thanks, Ralph. I was pretty proud of my uh, bear trapsmanship there. Every time I see Sao Sao Ann, I always want to call it Sam Hain. I think because the Ghostbusters cartoon called him Sam Hain. Maybe? I might be remembering that wrong. Now there was head crushing bugs coming out and shit like that. Real life occult shit is way less showy than yeah. They would just kill a guy. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have head eating bugs, I'm sure. It's funny, I, uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on stream, but I have a fun story about Halloween 3. Uh, my first ever exposure to it, I was a little boy, and it was on TV randomly, and, uh, and the only part I remember was a guy punching another guy through the stomach and yellow gook coming out, and it freaked me out because I was like five or six, and I, I was a kid who was not exposed to horror type stuff. Uh, I didn't really see any gore or really any blood ever uh, in movies. And so I very vividly remember a guy getting punched so hard in the stomach that yellow schmutz came out and it kind of burned into my brain forever. And once that happened on screen, we were eat this was at breakfast, by the way. We were eating breakfast as a family. And my mom's like, Ray, my dad's name, Ray, turn that off! Like, gesturing to me, the child who was horrified uh, by this grisly sight. And for the longest time, I was like, I'm never going to figure out what that was. Or that was a fever dream. Like, it's just gone. There's no way I'll figure that out, what that is. And then I watched Halloween 3 years, decades later as an adult. And I'm like, oh my god, this is the movie where he punches a guy and yellow schmutz comes out. It was so, so wild. Faf Southside says, smack, 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 smack. Faf Southside, thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Cochran has these, uh, ro yeah, the robots, yep. Why are they selling question, 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 chocolate? Ch Faf Southside, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> You okay? <laughs> it's, a, it's a mystery. <laughs> Alright, what do we got here? I got all the scrap here. We clean this joint out. Do we have a Russian bot in our midst? No clue. No fucking clue, man. Does it work like that? I thought the bots were just on Twitter and Facebook. 
Faf Southside, fill us in, man. I did not come around on Halloween 3 until Shout put it out in remastered scope. I'm doing great, shout me out. Faf Southside, I shouted you out a bunch, my dude. No, it's a it's a it's a fun flick. It's a it's a weird one. He will shout you out. He's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a good host. I'm geeked when anybody talks to me, even if I'm not like fully understanding what's happening. I'm I'm cool with it. This is a hangout stream. Cause I'm sure as shit not like a speedrunner or good at any of the games I play, so I have to like I have to get by on charm. Hey y'all. <laughs> All right. Gotta, gotta weasel my way past this bear trap bullshit again. This is funny. I've actually, this is the first time I've encountered this in this game. Oh, baby. You're still alive so far? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm in a groove now. I was kind of hitting some camps I wasn't prepared for uh, earlier on the stream. I wonder... Alright, guys, I'm gonna do something stupid. Yep, okay, good. They do work. <laughs> You never know, though, Lori. It's the post-apocalypse. Maybe that shit broke down. Maybe it rusted out. Let's get it. Agreed, Faf Southside. Fuck yeah, man. You, you. We're on the same page. We're good. Dude, that was. Speaking of bear traps and Jason, that was one. Jess and I were just talking about the remake and how the remake is secretly pretty good or reboot, whatever the fuck it was, the one that came out in like 2013. Uh. Man, that shit was good! And, like, it established all his trappy shit. I liked seeing Jason's traps that he set. Because he has that kind of animal cunning. And I, I really appreciate that. Thursday night for the fucking boys, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday night, but I like the energy, man. My version with Manfredini music is a lot better. I believe it. I believe it. Okay, I need sniper rounds for this camp, so I'm not going to fuck with that. I might do this race. Death run, yeah. So the death runs are how you earn uh, other cars for your garage. That's tempting, I might do that. How many level up points do I have? Six. I'm going to go level up some, I think. He's way up here. There's this camp here. That's a tough camp. I don't know if I'm going to fuck with that camp. That's a tough camp, too. Dang. These are all tough camps. Blood or Crip, what you reffing, Blood? Uh, neither. I'm pretty sure I'm not cool enough to be a Blood or a Crip. Like, I'm just going to be honest. I'm not going to I'm not gonna play like I'm some hard ass. I'm just some fucking dude. <laughs> Oh yeah, there are still Bloods and Crips, man. That that did not ever go away. Oh, Betsy is Jason's mom. Yeah, because fucking uh, Kira from Deep Space Nine plays his mom in the remake, which is bonkers. Just called that immediately. It was hilarious. Alright, let's try and find let's try and find this bad boy camp and get these little bad boys. <laughs> there are still Bloods and Crips, unless Rap has been telling me wrong. <sighs> How dare they lead me astray? Ooh, did I just drive over it? Oh, I thought I did. Oh, I drove. I drove. Drove? Jesus. Dro See now. Okay, it's really hidden. These guys are really secretive. So did you know Mustafa Akkad tried to keep John Carpenter involved in the Halloween series? I didn't know that, but it's a good fucking call. For the longest time, I mistakenly thought he had uh, greater involvement with two. Oh, here it is. There we go. Carpenter's script for four was more weird shit, though. Good. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, we're fine. Yeah, I'm just a guy, man. Like, I'm not a blood or a crip. They w look at this. They don't want this. <laughs> like, right? I'm not blood or crip material. Unless, I mean, unless one of them's doing real fucking bad, then maybe they would take me on. Hey, do you need a soft nerd in your crew? 
I'm your guy. I'm okay at video games though, bro. That's right, just okay. <laughs> Pretty dope, right? He had Michael Myers as a ghost that kept coming back because Haddonfield was still afraid of him. And that Cod wasn't in for that. That's almost some Freddy shit. I think I would have bet. I kind of would have been on board for that. That sounds kind of sweet. For as hidden as these layers are, there's not a lot to do. You beat up like two guys and then bounce. You don't want no smoke with Larry the Cable Guy? Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Look, I know I'm not blood or crit material, but I'm also not Larry the Cable Guy. Shit. Oh yeah, we talk about some Freddy shit. That is that is our MO. Usually it ends up being like 30% video game talk, 30% slasher talk, 30% kaiju talk. That's about it. Akkad tried to get Carpenter in. Yeah, did I not set this off? Akkad tried to get Carpenter in for Halloween 6, and John Carpenter's idea was, and I shit you not, Michael Myers in space. I want that movie! It was so ridiculous they made fun of it in the movie itself. No, fuck that, dude! I want the, I want Michael Myers in space! That would have been sick. That would have been a dope-ass movie. Because that's, that's... I love that. I love when slasher movies go to... Leprechaun. Leprechaun was very good about this. Leprechaun went to the hood, and then he went to space. Or vice versa. I think he went to the hood first. I can't remember. He went back to the hood at some point. Ah, fucking good. Okay, cool. We were just waiting for that bomb to go off. Fab Southside, it's okay to talk shit. I know I'm not cut out for the bloods or the crits. I'm not mad. It's just, it's just not a good fit for me, that's all. Add me, oh no, Chunchu on PS4 Fortnite. Fuck yeah, I haven't played Fortnite at all yet. It looks sweet. I haven't played Fortnite or PUBG yet. They both look super fun though. And then Akkad tried to get Carpenter to direct Halloween H2O, and Carpenter quoted his price as a million dollars. Dimension was all like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I, dude, I love John Carpenter. Like, there's there's this aspect to him where he's like, fuck it, I just want to watch basketball and play video games. I'm like, man, I respect that. Like, good on you, dude. He bust he busted his ass for years and got like not a lot to show for it. I mean, other than the huge impact he's had on genre filmmaking. You've played with Ninja. Okay, I you know I didn't know about Ninja until. Uh, until recently when he had shit i don't even remember who he had on he had some big guest stars on i'm way behind man i'm way behind on all the twitch shit i'm still learning i that's the thing i'm behind on stuff but i'm willing to learn you know what i mean that's pretty much what he said word for word at the q a at the convention i saw him at yeah yeah man i get it I get, I get where Johnny Carps is coming from. I don't necessarily agree with it, 100%, but I get it. What, you thought I watched my movies on Halloween? I watched basketball. Yeah. Dude, most most people who make their own stuff don't watch don't watch it. And I, I, I kind of get that, too. Drake, Travis Scott. Yeah, Drake. Jesus, how did I forget that it was Drake? Because, yeah, Drake played PUBG with Ninja, and then he spent most of his playthrough hiding in a bush. Which people call them out for, but it's like, it fucking works, so who cares? Oh no, Choon Choo. Yeah, man, I'll follow you. Don't even work. I Real talk, guys. Anybody that comes on the stream and talks to me, I follow them back. Uh, that's just how I do. Alright, I want to I wanna take out more Scarecrows. I'm going to take out this one. Ooh, and I want this hot air balloon ride. We're doing that. Oh, yep, we're going to head out this way. Thanks, Ted. I try to be awesome. It's fucking hard. <laughs> I'm 
try to try to be on the up and up. I look at uh, I look at Mr. Rogers and I look at Andrew W. K. And I'm like, I want to be like those dudes, except I swear. <laughs> it's pretty much my ammo. I think that Carpenter has more than earned his. He has, man. He totally like he he gets to be done. <laughs> like we don't have to like it because I would love if he kept just making shit forever. But like he gets to be done. 78 to 88. Yeah, he was killing it, man. He's 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 easily in my top three directors. Shit's just good. And he busted his ass. Did that shit for nothing. Everybody had a big boner for, for Spielberg and James Cameron. Understandably. I do too. But like... Shit, man. The Thing is one of my favorite movies of all time. Top 5, easy breezy. Hey, idiots, what's up? Boom, you're dead. <laughs> hey, what's up, idiot? You're dead. Carpenter did a movie semi-recently called The Ward, but it wasn't very good. Or at least, it wasn't up to snuff. Cameron really came in after Carpenter. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Carp or, uh, Cameron was more of a late 80s blow-up. Alright, what else we got? Oh shit, we haven't even made it to... Oh boy. Oh boy, let's fast travel. God damn. I would say Cameron didn't really blow up until T2. That's a fair point. I would agree with you on that, actually. He was kind of humping it out in relative... Hum, uh, humping it out is a phrase that knocks around in my head. I don't say it out loud a lot because it just sounds like a sex joke. But I mean, like, he was... He was out there doing his fucking grind. In the 80s, he had Piranha 2, Terminator, and the Abyss. Abyss is kind of a big deal. I feel like I feel like we've all kind of forgotten about the Abyss. But, uh, man, the first time I watched it, it blew my fucking mind. I'm like, that's an like, amazing movie. One of the earliest, like, really good uses of CGI. It's easy to poo-poo CGI because... Uh, because we've abandoned so many practical effects in favor of it, but there, there are some things that CGI is just fucking radical at. He nearly drowned Ed Harris in it. Yeah, that's shitty. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not into this whole, like, oh, let's, let's hero worship these directors who have abusive and shitty practices. Like, I don't, no movie. That, that Bruce Campbell interview was a great example of like it's just it's just movies, man. It's not worth it. It's not worth to put people's lives on the line. CGI is not a horrible thing. It's overused. And yeah, exactly, exactly. People lean on it too hard. And there's cases where uh, where practical would be better. But there's also a ton of shit that only CGI could do. This is maybe not the best example, but like. Quality-wise, not the best example, but I look at the Transformers movies, and each Transformer is eight billion Greeblies moving around. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that's gotta be CGI. Does everybody know the term Greeblies? That's a really fun term that I didn't know until uh, a few years ago, and uh, Johnny Five actually name drops it in Short Circuit too, which is hilarious if you know what Greeblies means. Transformers do have ugly CGI, but like, I can't, I can't perceive of that even being possible with practical effects. Again, I, I'm trying to divorce it from, from quality. Hurry up and fix the car. Greeblies are, uh, it's an industry term for just like doodads that make a surface look busy and interesting. And in Short Circuit 2, Johnny Five, he's getting fixed or something. And he says, don't forget the Greeblies. And it's like, if you don't know the term, it just sounds like a techno babble term. But if you know the term, it's kind of hilarious because it means don't forget the just random shit glued on me to make me look interesting. Subrai did it in the 70s. Subrai did Transformers in the 70s? 
not look like shit, but they did it with men in suits then. Yeah, I feel like, uh... Robots and stuff are a little tougher in rubber suits because it bends and it breaks the illusion. You need, if you do, if you do robots practically, you need to use stiff materials. Not transformers, but giant robots fighting each other. What Super Raya property is is giant robots? I would love to check that out. Super, thank you, Super Robot Red Baron. Okay, I've actually heard of that. I didn't realize it was robots fighting other robots though. I figured that was another Ultraman situation. Which, Ultraman situation, guys, feel free to use that for your band or uh, whatever. Maybe I'll use it. Shit. Wait here. Yes, I'm a protector, Saint. But don't be long. Please. So in a lot of ways, this game reminds me of uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, where it's a, it's a big open world and there's lots of stuff to do and you can just explore at your leisure. But what's funny is in Breath of the Wild, Link can climb anything, and he also has a dope hang glider, so when he jumps off a, a mountain, he can just hang glide down gracefully. And I keep dearly wishing that uh, our boy Max here. could do either I or both think. of those things. Mechagodzilla is a very stiff latex, but it's still rubber, so it can move. That's why the suit is still extant. That's interesting, because a lot of those suits decompose, which is terrifyingly sad. Yeah, Max doesn't do a lot of climbing or hang gliding, so character-wise it fits. Gameplay-wise, I wish he could. We've got a scarecrow up there. Let's hit this hot air balloon, though. Yeah, man, they just rot. Uh, it's it's fucked up, cause I know the uh, I know the old Slimer suit and Mr. Stay Puff suit did the same thing. They had them both uh, at uh, Planet Hollywood, but they were both in a state of decay even then. You know, in in the early '90s or whatever. It's just sad. I wish that I you know I wish I wish some version of that stuff could last forever. The '90s. The 93 suit is just head mechanics now. Yeah, man, it's fucked up. It's weird. It's weird to think that they decompose like living tissue. It's almost like... It almost reinforces this idea that they're real living things. Meanwhile, Space G and Destroyer are still extant because they're really stiff. Yeah, dude. And then it's, it's kind of funny because that's my biggest beef with all the Kawakita movies. Like... They look great, but they don't fucking move. So it kind of defeats the whole point of them looking good. Like, I would rather they be mobile. That's why I'm a Showa boy. I'm a Showa boy, dude. Like, I want I want my monsters to move around and wrestle. Looking like, looking high fidelity is almost secondary. This game is gorgeous. There's actually, Ralph, it's funny you, you mentioned that because there is a whole uh, a whole suite of options. I'm going to pull it up. There's a whole capture mode dedicated to just taking pictures of these striking vistas with just a lone psycho. It's, uh, this game knows what it is. I, I really appreciate every aspect of this game. Maguro would probably still be around, but Nakano destroyed it when he burned down a soundstage shooting prophecies of Nostradamus. That's amazing. At the time of the high sci films were made, monster wrestling was very frowned upon. Boy, that fucking tracks. Beam wars forever, right? Oh, God! Ew! 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 Ew, gross! What is this boy's deal? He's gross... Gremlin boys! Ew! I have to punch them! It's over. It's over. Ew! Oh, God. <laughs> I was telling... I was telling Ralph and Jess about this earlier. I love this game. Uh, it, it scratches a really specific series of itches for me. But sometimes I have to step back and recognize that this game takes place in hell. Like, and not like, not like fun, not fun, cool hell, where that's where I go when I die, 
and I do cocaine with rock stars and we drive dirt bikes off volcanoes, but like actual horrible hell, like it's a bummer hell. That's what this takes place in. Look at this. I'm going to eat maggots real quick. Mmm. This is what my life is. This is America in 2020. This is where we got two years before we're living this life. Around that time, Toho wouldn't have anything to do with the 70s movies, except maybe Mechagodzilla. Fuck that. They were incorrect. Uh, for a very long time, Toho wouldn't let Bandai make uh, figures of Godzilla other than 54, 62, and 64 in post-80s suits. Jeez. You're supposed to be talking me out of suicide? <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, no, shit might change. I know, I know a lot of st not to get into the politics thing. I know, uh, I know some big stuff has been happening recently that is heartening. <clears throat> but, you know, we still might be eating maggots out of rib cages soon. Just be, just be mentally prepared for that. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's my adorable hot air balloon. I will say that too. This, this feels most like an extension of Fury Road because it's just pitch black all the time. Whereas the, the original three movies would have moments of goofiness or levity that aren't, aren't quite here for Fury Road, which I respect, but it also is sad. At this point, I think the finality of nuclear war might be a relief on some level. Agreed, Ralph. That's the thing. Just just wipe us out. Just wipe just wipe out this cursed uh, primate aberration that humanity is and give the octopuses a chance. They're really smart. Octopuses are at caveman level. They use tools. Let them evolve. Maybe they'll be a little more chill. Maybe they won't be so fucking shitty and warlike like we are. I take no relief in that, says Ted. And you probably shouldn't. But, you know, it's a, uh, a sweet release of death kind of thing. I need a electricity and civilization. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah, shit. I wouldn't exist without electricity, right? And the internet. What can I? Oh, here we go. We'll just lower it. It's interesting, at some of these uh, camps with the... With the hot air balloon. Um, the first few I encountered just worked. But uh, sometimes you have to fill the generator with gas. It's cool. It's it's a good game. It's, it's funny because I am of... I think, actually, Ralph, Ted, I think we're all of the generation where a licensed game was passable at best. You would maybe get like a Turtles in Time. That was pretty good. But for the most part, licensed property games were shitty. We've come a long way since then. There's a lot of good, like, truly good licensed property games, like Goldeneye. Goldeneye is fucking excellent. And I, I, would, I would slot this, I would slot something like Mad Max in alongside that. It's a hog. An old ship. So yeah, this, now that I'm up in the hot air balloon, I can scout out stuff in this area. Yeah. So this will fill up my map. And, uh, help me out a lot. A lot of Molotov slings. That's a new thing. I haven't really run into that before. I assume that's a... That's sort of like the sniper outposts that I'll have to deal with. <laughs> yeah, the LJN stuff was all fucking terrible. I remember... Dude, I specifically remember renting the Back to the Future game as a kid and just being like, What the fuck is this? Is this even a game? And when you're little, at least for me, when I was little enough, I would assume, oh, I didn't, I didn't know there was a such thing as just a bad game. I would just think, oh, I'm not good enough at video games for this. And then much later I realized, oh, it was just a shitty game. It was just a trash game. It wasn't me. Because kids are fucking good at video games. I like that this whole game looks like the uh, that one that one cliffside that gets used in every show. It's uh, I can't think of the name of it, but uh, it shows up in Star Trek when Kirk fights the Gorn, and it gets used in like every other thing ever. All right, I think we got everything. 
Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street is okay. It doesn't feel it. It has you know it's an NES game, so it doesn't capture. It really doesn't capture the feel of the movies at all. But as a game, it's pretty fun. Deadly Towers. I don't know that one. It's a place in California. Yeah, I can't. It's a. It's a. It's actually. It's a state or national park now. I can't remember. I unfortunately can't remember the name of it. But I. I do. That's one of those things I always love when it shows up. Like it's. It's a trope that I'm like, yay. It's, it, I'm not, I'm never mad at that. It's like the Wilhelm scream. I'm never mad at that trope. Ooh, there's got to be an easier way down. The, uh, <laughs> when, when this game hits night, oh, there we go. When this game hits nighttime, it all turns blue, which is very evocative of that nighttime scene in Fury Road. I think this game takes a ton, obviously, it takes a ton of inspiration from Fury Road specifically, but, uh... I don't know, it feels like a love letter to the whole franchise. <laughs> Thanks, Ted! I don't know why you envy me, but I, uh... Fuck, I'll take a compliment. Take it where I can get it. Look at this scarecrow. Look at the other scarecrow. Shut up, scarecrow. Nobody likes your style. Can I harpoon you? I think you're too big to harpoon. Oh, there we go. Because you don't know Deadly Towers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fill me in. I do I do love hearing tales of a, a good, terrible game. Keep the car safe. That number that's ticking down, by the way, that is the threat level in this region. So uh, every time I complete, you know, all these different tasks, like uh, whether it's tearing... The, the scarecrows are sort of like totems placed by... Um, stank gums gang they kind of they're kind of territory markers so even just something as simple as that lowers the threat level a little bit because it destabilizes skank, stank gum a little bit i've been pretty lucky with avoiding terrible games right because usually the i mean anymore the really bad shit gets called out and 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 shit on very publicly um i can't remember towers other than this legendarily bad rep what yeah yeah i'm i'm curious because when i think of like big rigs hmm. you know i think i i, I you know the the bad game i've spent the most time with and misunderstood <laughs> to be a good game was Bubsy on Super Nintendo. My sister and I both fell for that because he's a cool cartoon character. He's very sassy and, and funny and cartoony. Uh, and we, we both loved that game uh, as kids. And since I had such fond memories of it, I tried to play it later in life and it just fucking sucks. Like... <laughs> The controls are, are weirdly, like, sloppy and floaty. It just... Because it's a side-scroller. It's a platformer. And so... The bread and butter of that franchise is... Or that... Excuse me. That series is that it needs to feel good to be in control of this character. And it doesn't feel good to be in control of that character. <laughs> but it's funny. I beat that fucking game, dude. Back in the day... I, I said, like, I, I spent time with Bubsy and I beat that shit. Which is crazy. When I played it as an adult, I was astonished that I, I toughed through that game. Yeah, Bubsy sucks. <laughs> it's, just, it's just awkward and floaty and shitty in, in such strange ways. And it wanted to be, it wanted to be a, a fast boy game like Sonic, except not satisfying like Sonic at all. And the character's obnoxious. You revisit it as an adult. And Bubsy's a, a, just a, an annoying penis wrinkle. It's it's wild. Uh, if you really want to punish yourself Riccio style, check out the pilot episode of the Bubsy cartoon. Because that's a thing that it exists. It's on YouTube. 
and it's very bad. He's just constantly re-spewing his catchphrases over, his two catchphrases over and over again. It's very, very bad. I'm going to pass me thinks. Yeah, that's a, an, an excellent choice. Dang, four skulls? I'm definitely not ready for that. I think... Ooh, ooh, it's a little after 12.30, guys. It's way after 12.30. I don't give a shit. I'm going to take down these two scarecrows before I quit. I think, uh, yeah. That's my plan. Ooh, or I could pop off those boys. Yeah, I'm going to hit all these boys down south here. There's like three things I can hit real quick. Actually, I'm going to hit that sniper first. It is, you know, it is Poochie, but it actually, in a weird way, Bubsy feels a little more genuine than Poochie, if only because he wasn't being added to an existing property. He was just, I love, I have, I have a, a weirdly, a weird kind of morbid fascination with the, uh, the mascot gaming arms race of the early 90s. So between Mario and Sonic, every video game company and their grandma had this idea in their head like, oh, we need to come up with a cool mascot, a cool side-scroller mascot. That's the trick to becoming a successful video game company. So you had things like Bubsy or Arrow the Acrobat or, you know, uh, Rocket Knight, a.k.a. Sparkster, depending on what system it was on. And to be fair, Rocket Knight Adventures is pretty sweet. But, uh... <laughs> Mascot gaming arms race. Yeah, exactly. That was that was the that was the gaming landscape in the early 90s. I never thought I would hear the name Bubsy again, but it is fascinating. Battletoads I give a little credit um because Battletoads specifically was trying to cash in on Ninja Turtles. To me that is a different thing from all these all these Mario and Sonic wannabes. It's still a wannabe for sure. I kind of like Battletoads, though. I've always had it in my head that the Battletoads would win in, in a street fight against the Ninja Turtles. Because the Battletoads were kind of hood rats. Like, they would... <laughs> the Battletoads would just bring a gun. Like, right? The Ninja Turtles kind of had this honor code. But the Battletoads are just these kind of, like, these dirt bags, And I, I appreciate that about them. Fuck you, sniper! You're dead. Eventually. The Ninja Turtles uh, never had to deal with that snake shit. Yeah, right? Like, the Battletoads, the... Now, to be fair, the first Ninja Turtles game on NES is, ex like, stupidly extremely hard. But every Battletoads game is stupidly extremely hard, too. So, I think that's part of why I give them this, like, this hard-ass, like, hood rat connotation. It just seems appropriate. But yeah, I love... I can't even list... I can't even list all the wannabe Mario and Sonic knockoffs. Because there, there were a bunch of them. Um, there was Bonk, a.k.a. Zonk. Who was a caveman character for Neo Geo Systems. I love it. It's a weird it's a weird little microcosm that I'm a little bit obsessed with. And that that rain lasted a long time too. You had you had a cute cuddly knockoff platformer characters well into the early 2000s. You had shit like because because that whole the platformer genre had a revitalization with like Mario 64. So then you had Banjo Kazooie, which is for sure one of the best ripoffs ever, to the point where it's it's kind of its own thing versus being a pure ripoff. But you had Croc, you had Spyro, you had Crash Bandicoot. Like the ripoffs started getting legit, which is exciting. It reminds me of all the slasher ripoffs, because like I love Friday the 13th, but let's be real, it's a Halloween knockoff. Like, there's no way around it. Even though I was an NES, SNES guy, I had knowledge of other systems thanks to it. Like, ah, yeah, Electronic Gaming Monthly was my jam. I did Game Fan, 
Not to be confused with Game Pro. I did Game Fan for a few years, and then I transitioned into EGM. My favorite of the Mario and Sonic knockoffs for sure was Earthworm Jim, because it was weird as shit. <laughs> But, unfortunately, only the first two games were good. Everything after those first two games is trash. Those first two games were legit, though. I mean, to some extent, even uh, the Donkey Kong Country games were kind of cashing in on uh, all the Mario and Sonic hype. Compared to the Friday the 13th knockoffs, the Friday the 13th is like the... Yeah. Oh, sure. That's the thing. Friday the 13th is such a good knockoff that it doesn't really count as a knockoff anymore. Like, I, no shit. I, I, like Hall or I like Friday the 13th better than Halloween. I, I fully recognize that Halloween's maybe the better film, but Baby Boy likes Jason. Jason, Jason's my homie, dude. Like, the there's, there's no, uh, there's no like, there's no like filmic critical um, justification for it. I just fucking like Jason. What you gonna do? Oh god. Uh, hopefully not get hit by this car. Man, bullets are so scarce in this game, which uh, feels very authentic to the Mad Max experience but it's also horrifying constantly. I didn't see Earthworm Jim as a Mario Sonic knockoff because it was so much its own thing. Yeah, it's it's trippy as balls. Even though Jason's not in Friday the 13th, yet Michael Myers is in Halloween. Yeah, oh sure. Like, that is a that is a very valid point. Oh, <laughs> chum bucket, I hope you're okay, my dude. I have one shotgun shell. I might use it on this guy because this is, this is trouble. They do a nice bullet time thing for you too when you when you start to bust out either your shotgun or the harpoon. Oh, I would I think I think I think very few people would argue against Friday the 13th being the, the stronger series. I don't care for Halloween. I guess I would include three for the for the novelty factor, um, but really I'm I'm just I just dig on one and two. Three is interesting, but it's it's its own thing. It's four and five I was not feeling. H two O was solid, and the one after H two O was fun. And, oh, he's a piece piece now. The one after H2O is, is fun in like a campy kind of way. But yeah, I would totally say Friday the 13th is, as, as a whole, taken as a whole, is stronger. I'm going right here. Is four? Okay. Film, Ted, fill me in on four, because it's kind of a blur. I'm, Jess and I marathoned like all these movies. Um, four, does four have the barn scene? Because I remember really liking the barn. You like H2O less than Rob's... Oh, it excludes Rob Zombie's movies. Okay. Five has the barn. The barn thing was, like, intense, and I dug that. Those Rob Zombie movies sucked. I've never liked a Rob Zombie movie. I'll just say it. Jess and I gave him fucking, like, three chances. We watched... Uh, yeah, we gave him exactly three chances. We watched uh, House of 1000 Corpses, we watched Devil's Rejects, and we watched his Halloween remake, and they all just fucking are not good like i don't get it i true like he's a big horror fan but i feel like he doesn't understand what makes horror work i don't know or maybe i'm not a big enough horror fan i i just it doesn't click for me at all five is batshit insane directed by a batshit insane man <laughs> so of course that's the one i like my crowd in the theater walked out of Zombie Ween over the runtime. There was like seven or ten of us by the end. That's amazing. Good. I feel that makes me feel uh, vindicated. I guess I have so much scrap. I should cash that in. Oh God! I know I said I was gonna quit like 15 minutes ago, but this game is uh, horrifyingly playable. So I'm gonna keep playing. 
And then Zombie Ween 2 came, and I was like, well, shit, the first one looks like a real Halloween movie in comparison. Yeah, I, man. I don't dig it. I truly do not dig it. Uh, because, to me, what makes Michael Myers such an effective character is that there is no reason for him to snap and start killing people. To me, that is what makes him scary. And Zombie Ween comes along and is like, Ugh, what if, like, he had a really bad home life? Wouldn't that be so edgy and interesting? And it's like, no, it defeats, it defeats literally everything that makes him an interesting and scary character. Oh, here's some of that nightmare imagery, by the way. I'm in a fucking dark underground cave surrounded by these red-eyed man-demons. I'm just punching for my life. Shit is gruesome. Here's some rusty spikes! <laughs> no wonder- if fucking no wonder Max is crazy, right? Like, I don't fault him for losing his mind and being like, I just want to drive into the desert until I never have to see or talk to anyone ever again. Actually, I really, <laughs> I really to max a lot on that level. <laughs> Oops. Uh, in 1995, Mustafa Akkad threw a script across his office for making Myers a homeless person, which is exactly what Zombie did. Yeah, it's stupid. It's fucking dumb. It misses the whole point of that character. You may not grasp this because you're not as familiar with it, but A Nightmare on Elm Street... Uh, stole wholesale from Phantasm. Yeah, I've, I've only seen the first Phantasm. That's really interesting. I liked it. It's the superior film, of course, but it owes so much. Well, yeah, Phantasm is very surreal. Like, I, uh, when Jess and I, I Ted, I don't think, I don't think you've seen, um, Channel Zero because it's on cable, but the most recent season of Channel Zero does a lot of surreal stuff, and, uh, especially include some very upsetting uh, little people characters and it made me think of Phantasm right away because Phantasm also includes these very uh, surreal and disconcerting little people characters when Nightmare was made there was only the first Phantasm oh okay Oh shit, this is a strong, this is a strong scarecrow, a strong boy. Ooh, it's a fortified, I haven't dealt with a fortified scarecrow yet. I've only dealt with weak, normal, and strong. This will be, uh, this will be a beefy boy. A nightmare, oh, okay. I'm caught up on shit. Damn, son! Like, Phantasm seems cliched now, but in 79, nobody was doing what it was doing. I would, I would argue it's still a pretty wild fucking flick. It's still, I would say it's still pretty unique. There we go. There we go. Yeah, fan <laughs> Phantasm's nuts. I, uh, I do dig that. I, Ted, what is, I know you hate... Uh, you hated Ravager, but what is your ranking of the other sequels? Slash, as a slasher fan, should I just watch them all? <laughs> I think I'll probably just watch them all. I don't know. Hellraiser got bad after two. I kind of don't want to watch the other Hellraiser movies. How do you mean? Ooh. I just mean, what's your what's your personal ranking for the Phantasm sequels? I'll give you a sec, because I want to... I like Hellraiser 3 and 4 better than 1 and 2. Oh, shit! Well, we're on a different page with that. I watched... Justin, I watched... I can't remember which Hellraiser has Adam Scott in a small role. I think it's 4. I really loved Hellraiser 1, and I liked Hellraiser 2. Your ranking is Phantasm, 4, 2, 3, and 5. Okay. Isn't four Ravager? Feel me. Which one is Ravager? Because I know that's the one that you're like, fuck that movie. So I want to know which. I, I want to know where that falls. 
four is oblivion. Ah, with the IV, the Roman numeral for four, snuck in there. Beautiful. Five is Ravager. Okay, so so Natch, that's at the bottom of the list. I feel you. Yeah, one was dope. I liked that... Uh... Shit, I can't think of the director's name. But I liked that he did the John Dies at the End movie. That felt like a really good fit. Ravager is technically Ravager with a capital V. Beautiful. Don Coscarelli, yeah. Did you see John Dies at the End? Have you read that book? Or or either? Yeah, yeah. John Dies is dope. Um, I, I mean, ultimately, I liked the book better because that's usually how that goes. But the movie was like... Okay, buddy, you got it. You 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 understood this. I wouldn't mind him doing. There was a sequel to the book. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind Coscarelli doing a adaptation of that beast. It's not as good as the first book, but it's uh it's a fun deconstruction of zombie shit. I think we could still use that. All right, we got a scarecrow here. We got a scarecrow there. I kind of want to just play this game forever, guys. I like talking to you, and I like playing this game. It's a match made in heaven or hell. When Coscarelli made Phantasm 4, which was the real end of the series, I was like, well, how is he going to be now? <laughs> Bubba Hotep fucking ruled. I loved Bubba Hotep. I forgot that same dude did that. But, but mm, speaking of that Bruce Campbell love we were we were macking on earlier, I do love me some some Bubba H. Don's gonna be all right. Yeah, he's a good he's a good like little known horror director. I would love if he just kept getting work. Dude's banging it out. <laughs> now, I mean, is there a chance that maybe Ravager was just a bad script? Or, you know, maybe something behind the scenes went wrong with that. Actually, let's look at our... Let, let's see what we can upgrade. We got some garage stuff. We got a bunch of garage stuff. Armor? Fuck yes. Give me that armor, son. That is six hundo. Let's look at our other options. We juice up our exhaust. Also six hundo. That increases my top speed, though, so that's sick. Does it look sick, though? That's a... <laughs> It says a lot about me as a person. Does it look cool, though? New tires. That's nothing to sneeze at. They kind of look just dirtier. New shocks. That will not look cool, I guarantee it. Yeah, whatever. Helps my handling a bunch. Oh, a new hood ornament. Oh, yeah, did we never look at that new hood ornament? Oh, it's a cow skull. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Let's get the armor. <laughs> Fuck, man. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. Look at those fucking bars, son. This is a mean machine. I want to drive this car in real life. <laughs> so bad. Uh, Ravager's problem is that Don doesn't know what the hell he's doing with the series. That's amazing. Yeah, it's just like, oh, uh, I guess. <laughs> he had burned up a lot of bridges with people who made the other films, so it was kind of, it was kind of him to his own devices. Okay, and so yeah, he's kind of spinning his wheels, doesn't really know what, where to lead the series. Instead of wrapping up the story or even serving the story in the least, he just wanted to do. <laughs> Stuff that sounded cool. <laughs> That's what would happen if I was a movie director. What's the coolest thing we could do? Is it this? Let's do this. <laughs> That's the real reason why I never made it in Hollywood. Ralph, come over and play this game, sir. Come over and play this game. It's a dope fucking game. Uh, that's more or less how they did it. <laughs> yeah, let's let's be. I mean, there's there's a lot of much more uh, uh, prescient reasons why I'm not a Hollywood bigwig, but one of them is that I would just do whatever sounded the coolest. I'm I'm at peace with that, you know. I'm I'm comfortable with that. I've accepted that. I'm not done. 
by the way. I could play this fucking game forever. So I'm gonna go blow up. I'm gonna fuck it. I'm gonna blow up both of these scarecrows. I don't give a shit. Oh, bet you have to work in the morning. Yeah, I do. I work from home. They don't need to know. Oh, there's this bad little boy over here. I'm gonna have to blow him up. What good? Oh, hello. You're dead. This is what Chum Bucket wants, okay? Look, I just don't want to let Chum Bucket down, okay? He's a nice little guy. And he requires that I do murder for this beautiful car. Who am I, who am I to deny him of that? Oh, look at they pieced out. That's Prime Scrap just driving away. And my, you know, my car is a beautiful bad bitch, but it's not super fast. So they can, if they, if they're smart and know to outrun me, they can usually outrun me. So I'm not gonna chase after that guy. Fuck it. Matt, that sounds dangerously close to schizophrenia. Step back from that lens, my friend. <laughs> nope. I want mounted machine guns on that thing. Huge wheels, dude. Okay. Modern machine guns would be sick, uh, but I think in the world of this game that's not feasible because bullets are so scarce. It would be beautiful though. Um, big wheels, I think we can do. <laughs> I think we're moving in that direction. Look at this green ooze! What the fuck is this? What are we, Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze? I love it. That's the thing, one, one thing this game does really well is uh, finds different ways to depict a nuclear wasteland. It's not all just dunes and cliffs. There's one, oh shit, I'm going the wrong way. There's one really interesting area called Grit Canyons. And Grit Canyons specifically, actually most, most of the world of this game takes place on a dried out seabed. And Grit Canyons specifically is, I think, the Great Barrier Reef, but dried out. Uh, so it's very, un it's a really unusual setting. And it's beautiful, but it's also depressing because it's the Great Barrier Reef fucking dried out. Oh shit, here's the, oh, maybe that's not the convoy. A bunch of bad boys, though. Are they gonna come after me? They are. They don't know what they're messing with. Oh shit, and I just boosted past all of them. Like dumb I think they're out of range of my harpoon. Dang. Or they're just too armored. The harpoon you can level up as you go. And uh, at the stage I'm at right now, I can pull off unarmored tires. I think they must have. There we go. I can yank off chunks of armor, so that's nice. These are the buzzards. They have really uh, well armored. But they're not as, they only come out at night, which is really cool and interesting. And they are, uh, they're less numerous than like the roadkill boys or, uh, or Scabra Scrotus's guys. It's cool. They did a good job of giving all the gangs unique aesthetics. Oh, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> and Chum Bucket's so happy. Maybe I just want to make Chum Bucket happy forever. Is that so wrong? Oh shit. There's there's the convoy. Luckily they don't care about this. He's peacing out. What about his buddy? Is his buddy trying to bail? Alright. Yep. We'll let them peace out and collect some scrap. Stay put. <laughs> yes, me. Secret yes. of the you Use, Ted! <laughs> Tell me, man, you saw Phantasm 1. Just what in that movie makes you think there's some oncoming intergalactic war? Nothing except in Fan. I mean, Phantasm 1 does hint at there being a powerful alternate dimension. So I guess in theory that's enough to hint at an intergalactic war, but it is a stretch. I totally agree that it's a stretch. Jeez, dude. And no shit, of course Don Coscarelli wanted to, to uh, direct John Dies at the end. He must have read that book and creamed his jeans. 
based on the themes that are present in Phantasm. Ooh, 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 ooh. It gets a little foggy at night. I love, I love how the color palette changes so drastically at night. This game is like getting to play Fury Road, which is uh, amazing. Oh, look at this nasty scarecrow. Oh, that's what I uh, was targeting from the get. Yeah. I'll hit that scarecrow, too. Just saying. Life and death demo derby. Fuck yeah, dude. That's why I love this game. That's a good point, Ralph. Because, right, that's why he's harvesting corpses. Because they come to life in the other dimension, right? It's been forever since I've seen that movie. I'm excited to watch it again sometime. I will... Oh, look at that. Here we go. Got a nice little ramp arena. Some big pad armor on these small ones, huh? Are there bad boys around? Ah. <laughs> what a dum-dum. You missed, idiot. Where'd he go? He, like, ducked under that ramp. <laughs> You're dead. I, uh, I never feel bad about taking advantage of a situation like this in a video game. Games always gang up on me. Catch me at a weird time. You could have got the tall man hugging dwarves. And talk to them in backwards Vietnamese? That sounds fucking awesome. I would see that. Shit. Like he was almost buddies with the... Oh, man. Lot to unpack. Lot to unpack with the Phantasm movies. Like, let's... Let's... Let's be real about that, if nothing else. Oh, shit, no, I'm stuck. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Is that car still alive? This might fall. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, 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 oh! The dwarf was scared or hurt or something, and the tall man hugs him to make him feel better, if I recall correctly. Cool. I with with really surreal horror, I think you can get away. You can get away with a lot. Um, season three of Channel Zero pushed it too far. And some of the some of the stuff that they were uh, they were going for surreal horror with just came across as goofy. But other than that, you can really push it. Or if you do it right, you can really push it. Okay, I got you. Oh. There we go. Oops, there it is, baby. Oh shit. Oh dear. I can't believe that car is still alive. I'm gonna blow that up before I quit. I am probably gonna wrap it up now. Um, I could I could play this I could play this fucking game until eight in the morning. Oh, there's a hole that I dropped through. Okay, that's not ideal. Max, no. <laughs> Well, the show I'm talking about is an anthology show, so it's a different story every season. So, oh, I see the floor is like gone. Oh God, I'm not gonna collect that scrap. I'm gonna just be at peace with that. Oh, but yeah, it's an anthology show, so they do something different every season. And this most recent season was mostly good. Uh, they had Rutger Hauer play a major part. He's He does a great job. The story overall is really interesting. Um, I always, Ted, I always I actually always think of you when I, when we watched it because I had, oh fuck, that's going to be so hard to get to. That's so weird. Why is it set up like that? Um, <laughs> it, you know, except American Horror Story, I only loved the first season. Oh God, it's we ripped so that armor off car. and lay it on him. Please let me get in the car. There we go. Okay. 
yeah, I, I only loved season one of American Horror Story. I liked season two and three, and then I could not finish four. Four, I thought was offensively ridiculous. Um, and then I haven't gone back, and I've heard the later seasons are good. With Channel Zero, seasons one and two were fantastic, and season three was mostly good, but overdid some of the surreal stuff to the point of silliness. <laughs> Offensive, yeah, still offensively ridiculous. That's up for grabs. I'm not going to trademark that. Yeah, right, like, see, season four of American Horror Story, she's singing songs from the future and shit. I'm like, are you going to make that a plot point, or is she just going to do that because you're, you're trying to make the scary version of Moulin Rouge, which is impossible because Moulin Rouge cannot be scary? Get the fuck out of here, Boz Lerman. You dummy. Scott Bakula did that in Quantum Leap. Right. Also not, not a show known for being terrifying. Oh shit, there's a storm. So, one one aspect of this game I definitely have mixed feelings about are the sandstorms. Which again, it, it feels like a big uh, pull from Fury Road. Where, um, oh god. Every once in a while there are just these catastrophic sandstorms and really you just have to take cover which is fine, except fast travel is turned off. So you have to manually take cover, which, and I think the only places you can take cover at are the strongholds. Like, in this case, it's very far away. And so I'm just going to drive through this shitty storm, which will damage my car, and if I get out during it, it will damage me, which makes sense. Um, but it's just kind of like... It reminds me of the rain in Breath of the Wild, where it kind of just feels like you're punished for being playing for, for playing the game. Thematically, it makes sense though, so that's why I have mixed feelings. About it. Dad's gonna die because Sam sank the magic. Quantum Leap was great. Are, are we? Is everybody on the same page? That was a great fucking show. Uh, so yeah, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get to the nearest uh, friendly outpost, and I'll probably call it a night. Yeah, Quantum Leap had, like, a bullshit ending, right? Where he, uh, Sam never made it home. Much like Penny Dreadful. I, uh, I've definitely... Ted, mo mostly because of you, I... Because just I watched the first season and a half, I think, of Petty Dreadful, and it kind of lost us. Uh, but I've definitely heard about what a garbage ending that had. Quantum, it's, it's a ma Quantum Leap's a masterpiece. I'm pretty much convinced. It's nice. It, it's nice to see some uh, some shows just hold up fantastically well, like um, Frasier. Frasier just fucking slam dunk, and I think you, I think anybody could watch that at any time and just have a a fabulous fucking time. To make the end of season two, Ava Green defeats the devil in a demonic rap battle, and it's awesome. All right, you know I think. Now, Ted, don't crucify me, but uh, I'm not, I, I don't know, Ava Green uh, puts me off. There's something about her, or maybe it's just her character in that show, uh, but I was, there was something about it, I w just wasn't, I wasn't vibing right for me. And, I don't know, maybe it's because I was there more for, like, Wolfmans and Frankensteins, but, I don't know, Ava, A Ava Green is kind of a part of what put me off about the show. I used to like the idea of Sam meeting God. That was the crux of the last episode. That sounds awesome. <laughs> You're going to marry Ava Green? Good for you, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dalton was in the show, too, wasn't he? Timmy Dalton's great. I, I am all about some Timmy D's. 
all day, er day. Yeah, see, like, like, okay, now I gotta get out of the car, and I gotta get hurt for a while, while Chum Bucket fixes the car. It's just like, in, thematically it makes a lot of sense, but gameplay-wise, it's a real drag. Saw the last. Um, I didn't. Well, no, I, I I don't know that I've seen all. I know how Quantum Leap ends, but I don't know that I necessarily. I don't think I saw the last episode. That was a show that I always liked and would watch it when I could, but I never like sat down and watched all watched all of it. far away is this camp? Okay, we're almost there. Perfect. Perfect. Boom. In last episode, Sam hangs out with uh, this bartender most of the episode. And it's heavily implied that he's God. That's cool. That's, that's, okay. That's a solid end. That's cool. That's kind of a sweet ending. But they send him back, right? He still never makes it back to his home time, correct? That's a fucking downer. But it's kind of cool if he meets God and God's like, No, you're not done yet, homie. Like, you gotta keep going. That's a cool twist. The he never came home thing was... Yeah, 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 that's, that's like a bum rap, man. Especially because that show lasted, what, like seven or eight seasons? What are, hang on, let me let me get up to speed on my quantum leap facts. Cause that's a show that's always kind of been in my orbit, and I would catch it when I could. God tells him that Sam's been leaping himself around, and he can go home anytime he wants, but Sam can't believe that he's the one leaping. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that he's the one leaping himself around. Oh, so like he was in control of the leaps? Considering that his job was to fix every problem in history, it makes perfect sense that he would never go home. Agreed, Ralph. No, that makes sense. And no, in f fucking for real, like if he was the one secretly in charge of the leaps on some level, that's amazing. He's like a super angel. He's like a science angel. I'm into that. Holy shit, the final episode was May 5th, 1993. That's funny, because to me, to me, Quantum Leap is a quintessential 80s thing. That's a good fucking show. It ran from, oh, okay, it ran from 89 to 93. So only, only four seasons. Man. That's a good-ass show. I think the world needs another show like that. For God straight lied to this dude. <laughs> that could also be the case. God was just like, hey, he's doing a really good job. I'm going to just make sure he keeps doing it. That could very well be the case. Um, but yeah, man, dang. I, I got to be honest, guys. I don't want to quit, but I know my body needs me to quit. So I'm going to bounce. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce for tonight. Season 6 would have happened, it would have been about Al leaping around, trying to find Sam in the future. That's fucking cool. I love Sam. I love Sam. I loved, uh, I loved Al. I loved Ziggy. That was a cool show. They could, you know what? They could, I think they could remake Quantum Leap and I'd be okay with it. If it kept the spirit of the original show, I think it'd be worth it. Um, but yeah, I am going to bounce, guys. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Thanks for dealing with the hour and a half late start. Uh, anybody who was here at nine. <laughs> um, Bacula and Stockwell weren't down with a remake. That makes sense. Ralph, thanks for popping in, man. Uh, Ted, thank you for stopping in. Anybody else who's watching? It looks like we have a couple other viewers. Thank you for stopping in, too. Uh, if you liked this tonight, definitely come back next week. 
I'll probably be playing a Donkey Kong game of some variety next Thursday from 10 to midnight. Um, and, uh, I'm, uh, you know, we're also on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Mastodon as Super APT Friends. All of our videos go to YouTube, too, so if you want to check out one of our past streams, I send them all over there. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is it. Uh, and if you liked, if you liked Mad Max, man, shoot me a, shoot me a little message and I'll, I'll definitely stream some more Mad Max because I could, I could play this game infinitely, I think. It's a problem in my life where all I really want to do is play this game. Uh, it stops me from doing other important things. <laughs> that's games. Uh, but yeah, that's it. I'm rambling, I think, at this point. If you got, if you got something to say to me, fucking say it. Ted, you have a good Thursday, too. Uh, everybody have a good weekend. Again, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Y you're the best. <laughs> and, uh... And I don't say that fucking lightly. You're the best. I love you forever, and you're perfect. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Oops. I don't think I ended the stream. Oh, no. It's been forever since I streamed from a PS4. I kind of forgot how this worked. Is that the off button? There it is. Okay, bye for real. Bye.